Vlemic uh, today, so uh, looking forward to seeing Shooter back. Okay, any reason for this change? Because Taylor was bowling beautifully. You want to ease her in? Uh, I mean, yeah, she's 800 days off playing for Australia, so um, we're not going to rush her back in to play every single game, but um, we're just looking at different combinations that we're going to use at the back end of the year as well. Best of luck. Thank you. Jyoti, uh, obviously it was an important toss, but would you have liked to bat first as well? Uh, no, we we wanted to bowl first because we want to see our bowlers, how they actually react uh, against their batters. So I think uh, it's a good toss to lose. So you think it's a good toss to lose. Any changes to your team? So we have one change. Uh, in place of Sultana, we picked uh, Trishna, one fast bowler. Okay, so it's a two fast bowling combo. Yes. Best of luck for the match. Thank you so much. So the news from the toss is Australia have won and they have chosen to bat first. As expected, Alisa Healy has decided to bat first on a surface that appears to be conducive to batting, as was amply on evidence in the first T20I. Both teams have opted for a change apiece. As far as Australia are concerned, Taylor Vlamink goes out and in comes Megan Shoot. But it is again on the opening tandem of Elisa Healy and Beth Mooney that the spotlight will be on. They now have the most century opening stands in women's T20Is. Four. Can they make it five today? Joining me in the commentary box is Roselle Ahmed. Roselle. A very good afternoon to you. Very good afternoon. So it will be a cracking game, undoubtedly. I think uh, the Australian batters targeted 180 runs, which was uh, told by Elisa Healy in the toss. And uh, might be we will see some showcasing performance from this women team here in Mirpur Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium. It's the second last fixture of what is a six match assignment for the two teams. And currently, the Bangladeshis are having a bit of a team photograph. Remember, it's a historic tour for both teams, for never have Australia ever before toured the country for a bilateral assignment. Lots of lovely moments between the two teams. A look at the Australian lineup for today. Alisa Healy and Beth Mooney are expected to open. Megan Shute comes in for Taylor Vlaimink. Their spin troika of Sophie Molino, Georgia Wareham, and Ashley Gardner has been quite effective throughout the past four matches. Grace Harris also rolled her arm over in the opening T20I. Annabel Sutherland, Talia Magra, and Elise Perry will be in charge of dispensing pace bowling duties. Alongside, of course, Shoot, who is known to extract a lot of swing up top. And as we saw with Marufa Akhtar's bowling, the Bangladesh teenagers in the opening fixture during Australia's chase, there was some movement. And even when Annabel Sutherland or Taylor Vlaiming were in operation, they were also able to elicit a bit of bounce and swing. Yeah, undoubtedly as well. The bowlers of Australia, especially seam bowlers and medium fast bowlers, bowled really very well. And one thing, Taylor blaming in the first game, just uh, she returned into international cricket after 24 months and generated sheer pace. And also, he was moving the ball in both ways, inward and outward movement. Returned to international cricket after 801 days and struck with her third ball of the innings, taking out Shobhana Mostari was a little wavered, trying to feel for the contours of international cricket perhaps. Thanked Cricket Australia 
her friends and family at the post match press conference she'll be in the dugout today and those who will be taking the charge in the middle from bangladesh are of course captain nigar sultana jyoti she will rely heavily on her tin brigade comprising the likes of maruf akhtar rabia khan Trishna is a new addition to the side. Sean Akhtar, the leg spinner, who can hit the long ball as well, will have to dispense duties in both departments. But one thing, Anesha, uh, Dilara Akhtar, she got the chance. in this T20i series instead of Farjana Hokpinki Farjana had a disastrous ODI series her score was 0 5 and 7 single digit in the ODI series in three matches so bangladesh women they will be looking to dilara's performance today she was out in the first ball of the first T20i she bigger pardon umpires getting their way out to the middle Moshad Ali Khan and Rinda Rathi a bit of history being created by Rinda Rathi herself as well the first neutral umpire in a bilateral women's ODI series from India is the first female umpire from the country to officiate in a test match as well achieved the accomplishment during England women's tour of tour of India in December and among the challenges that both teams especially the visitors will face today Roselle is of course the temperature it's muggy hot the breeze that we saw and felt in the opening T20i is no longer there we were out there in the middle mm -hmm. ahead of the toss yeah and you could feel the droplets of sweat all over our faces right yeah, yeah there was sweating as well and uh, the thing is that it's really very hot and sunny weather i think uh, not an ideal atmosphere for playing cricket so uh, the ozi women they are not familiar with this type of temperature so i think uh, definitely they will suffer in the middle looks like a change in opening combination with the bat for australia phoebe litchfield the young gun from orange is likely to start of the proceedings with the bat It was Alisa Healy and Beth Mooney who paired up to blunt out Bangladesh's attack in the first T20I, but they've opted to mix and match, rejig their lineup a little bit, as would you would have expected because they got to that 127 run target in the opening T20I at a canter, and they have opted for perhaps a. left and left combination well it's a brand new opening combination mind you grace harris the right hander has been paired up with the left hander in phoebe litchfield gives both an opportunity to showcase their skills different styles of play one hits sixes for fun the other the younger counterpart can maneuver gaps at will but also bring out the power strokes at will so alisa heli and beth moni will both have some time off in the dugout at the start and that is one of the purposes 
of the series for Australia because they are trying to gauge their potential best 11 or best 15 for the upcoming ninth edition of the Women's T20 World Cup, which will be held at this very country yeah. in September, October. And Anusha, uh, this is experimental, I think so, because uh, this team will come back in Bangladesh in September, October for the T20 World Cup, Women World Cup. That's why they are just checking their batters, how well they can play here in this service. First ball, and that was a slower delivery, full length, just off the back foot, pushes and nudges into the offside. No run. Fariha Krishna, the left arm pacer, opening the bowling for Bangladesh. From the media box end, would be interesting to see if they opt for a pace bowling tandem at the start. There is a bit of shape imparted to that delivery to the right-hander. There was movement on evidence in the first T20i and it's good to see the youngster backing her skills and trying to move it inwards to the right-hander Harris. Fariha Trishna. She played six matches before this match and seven wickets is in her bag. Best three for 12. So left arm medium bowler to left-handed Phoebe Litchfield. Litchfield just using his feet, using her feet. Left arm pace happens to be a rare commodity in women's cricket globally. So it's a great platform for the 21-year-old Fariha Trishna to give us a glimpse of what she brings to the table. A little bit on the middle stump this time, got to move away from the left-hander keeping Phoebe Litchfield on a bit of tenter hooks, eliciting iffy feet movement from the 20-year-old. Excellent start to the over and to the match from Bangladesh. Just one conceded of the first four balls. Oh, using her feet and absolutely executed into the deep extra cover. Two fielders chasing it and a couple of runs taken by these two Aussie batter. Trying to negate the movement is Phoebe Litchfield. She was in two winds the previous couple of deliveries and will be on a bit of a mission to get herself out of a rut. Again, uses the feet, nudged back to the bowler. It's a good opening over from Fariha Trishna. Concedes only three as Australia finished the first one for just three runs on the board. Fariha Trishna's over. That was really very good starter for Bangladesh. And uh, she just trying to move the ball away from the batter. On the other hand, just uh, generated inward movement to the batter as well. Mixture of uh, cutter deliveries we have seen in the first over. Leg cutter, off cutter. Sharing the new ball will be Maruf Akhtar, the young pacer who was part of Bangladesh's under 19 T20 World Cup side. Flicked into the leg side. There is a misfield, and Grace Harris will get a boundary of Maruf Akhtar's first ball. 
a bit of a slip up in the field and that's something that bangladesh need to be wary of we have been seeing much improved fielding performances from the home team as the tournament as the series have progressed both in the odi leg and in the first t20 as well but but this is not the start that you would expect to give your premier pesa in the side this time uh, through the hands of maruf akhtar and uh, stopped by the fielder into the straightish mid off but the thing is that onisha uh, which need to be focused the ball is getting some extra movement today so gentle breeze is blowing through the field that's why they are getting some extra advantage from the air shaped nicely into the right hander grace harris is taken aback ever so slightly maruf akhtar is replicating pretty much what we saw in the opening t20i getting the ball to move both ways off the surface prodigious movement there and a good take by nigar sultana jyoti diving to her left seems like off cutter roll of the finger this time once again pretty full and driven nicely filler was there but no chance for her to stop that ball first boundary oh second boundary in fact in this over exquisite use of the wrists from harris flicked it into the leg side it was way beyond the reach of the fielder at deep square leg an expensive opening over from maruf akhtar eight considered already of the first four balls can she finish it off well pitched on a six stump line grace harris played at it and will get another boundary 12 of the over all against grace harris's name three fours of the first five balls launched forward and carted it through the offside one thing don't ball full here in this type of surface which is batting friendly and uh, marufa considered three boundaries when she delivered full length deliveries this time better one shortened the length and dot ball to finish up the over two gone 15 for nine it's potentially the line that marufa akhtar will review as she stations herself in the field after that expensive 12 run opening over from her should she consider bowling more of a fourth stump line and try to get the ball to shape into the right hander and keep that inside edge into play and also but uh, there is a big chance of hitting the off stump as well when pitching outside off and you are just shaping in good delivery slower at the same time length of delivery phoebe lichfield one of the superstars in the making had a great 2023 in international cricket but her her form seems to have tapered off a little bit went without scoring any substantial knock at the women's premier league in india has only had a high score of 35 in about 15 innings across international cricket and the wpl leading into this game beth mooney the other day during our post match conversation said australia are not too worried about the young lichfield's form mm -hmm. probably it's just a matter of time before she finds her fluency again right and uh, 
Phoebe Litchfield, Litchfield played 11 games, 189 runs on her bag as well. Has score unbeaten 52. Average is very good, 37.80. Trishna to Litchfield. This time once again just pitching the ball into the middle stamp and shaping away from the batter as well. The line from Trishna has been pretty immaculate. Probably something for Marufa to take note of. She's trying to keep the wickets in play while also eliciting movement into the left-hander. Dances down the track and tries to go over the infield but will be caught by Rabea Khan. A good take that from the youngster. Fariha Trishna is one of the replacements across the two sides in today's game and she strikes in her second over. Another unforgettable innings from Phoebe Litchfield as she makes the long way long walk back to the dugout just two of her seven deliveries it was the pressure of the dot balls and that nagging line she was bowling into the body of the left-hander from Trishna that made Phoebe Litchfield try and go over the infield hit it on the upper part of her bat and an easy catch for the fielder there yeah, one thing Phoebe Litchfield was just worried about her runs and uh, it's the result of a persistent length deliveries from Trishna. It was Murshida Khatun, the fielder. A good grab from her. Bangladesh will take a lot of confidence from that catch because they have been erroneous in the field and another surprise thrown in in the form of the one drop batter by Elisa Healy the captain in comes Georgia Wareham she showed in multiple games during the WPL that she can bail her team out the RCB in that case from precarious positions with the bat mm -hmm. is a frontline leg spinner what a delivery from Trishna and there was a big gap of the bat and pad. My goodness, not that much turn from Trishna. Excellent shape again from the left arm pacer this time to the right hander. Georgia Wareham launched forward and went in for an expansive drive. Didn't connect probably to her good fortune. Once again, it's another good delivery. Just uh, pitching the ball into the middle stump and uh, shaping into the right-handed batter exactly where the leg stump is. Krishna is inching towards a wicket maiden. Now, as a youngster playing your first match of the series, if you manage to do that against an Australian lineup, consider that a big, big achievement to your name. Once again, that's a good delivery, fulling delivery, and uh, that's a wicket maiden for Trishna. Three gun Australia women, 15 for one. What a superb start has it been from Fariha Trishna. Is playing only her 12th international match. Had only six T20I caps to her name before today with the best of 3 for 12. Has seven wickets in international cricket in this format. And there will be a change in the bowling. In comes the left arm spinner and vice captain Nahida Akhtar. Bangladesh have been able to keep the Australians on a leash. Turn their big, big turn away from 
Grace Harris of the first ball of Nahida Akhtar. Marufa Akhtar has had to make her way out. Was a bit expensive. Was carted for three boundaries in her opening over by Grace Harris, which prompted the bowling change perhaps. And Nahida is an experienced campaigner. This time bowls into the pads will be nudged towards the fielder, Shorna Akhtar at mid on. Yeah, bat and pad close together. She played in the previous delivery, Nahida Akhtar. Around the wicket, that's a short piece delivery. Got the elevation of time, but there is a fielder into the whitish long off region. Just one run added to Australian score scoreboard. Nahi Akhtar, of course, has a fair share of history attached to her name. Is the first Bangladeshi female player to have won the ICC Women's Player of the Month award in November 2023. Short again, pulled towards the mid-wicket fielder. Will get only one. Will Georgia Wareham gets off the mark. Nahida Akhtar, of course, started playing cricket mm -hmm. by watching former Bangladesh women's captain Salma Khatun. Considers the 2018 Asia Cup triumph their first major title. An inflection point in Bangladesh women's cricket history. Hails from Kishore Ganj district, but grew up in Dhaka. Yeah, and uh, very tight bowling. Oh, this time Ru is the pressure. That's a straight to the field. And then, no. Put down. Just uh, she covered a long area, but couldn't grab the ball. An excellent, excellent effort from Fahima Khatun who went for the catch instead of trying to stay stationed, stay put where she was at long off. And this is the kind of enterprise you want to see from sites like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. It is the pluck that you want to showcase against high ranked teams like Australia. Doesn't matter if you do not get to the ball and complete what was not a straightforward chance, but you've got to give credit to Fahima Khatun for that brave attempt. Australia are 19 for one after four overs. And Fariha Trishna will continue from one end. One thing need to be praised. That's a very good field setup from Bangladesh. Oh, this time just went to his to her left and uh, perfectly played into the offside uh, through the fielders and as well into the deep extra cover. Bowling over the wicket to the right hander is Fari Hatrishna, the left arm pacer. And you can see Georgia Wareham trying to offset her line by shuffling across the stumps, which she does pretty regularly in this format. Has worked extensively on her batting to mold herself into a frontline all-rounder. This time again short. Better Georgia Wareham frustrated. She missed that delivery. That should have been a boundary. Should have been hit into the offside. But uh, she missed it. That's why he's, she is a little bit frustrated. Trishna is bowling good. First delivery wasn't that good, but this time she's uh, trying to gain his form as well. Again, short, pulled away. There is no filter into the mid wicket region. Easy pickings for Wareham. She is upping the scoring rate for Australia, is Wareham. Goes back, rocks back, and pulls it exquisitely again. Will get a boundary, a well deserved one. There is no protection in the deep. 
in the leg side say for a slight deep square leg fielder who is moving finer ahead of this third delivery from Trishna a fuller length delivery this time around miscues it will be run less Georgia Verum single handedly spoiling Trishna's figures with those two boundaries of her first four balls in the second in her third over 27 on the board even Stevens for both the teams this time again Fuller driven straight to the filler short extra cover no run this time Bangladesh is bowling good on Asia but uh, sometimes they just uh, shorten the length deliver short piece deliveries so that's why they were punished in those kind of loseners full packed offside again went to the back foot again misfilled couple of runs looking for second one yes a nice little back foot punch it seemed to finish the over There will be a change in commentary. Shahnur Rabbani joins me. A very warm afternoon to you on Nisha. It is hot and sweltering out there. I was melting like a snowman in the middle during the toss. Dotted on the off stump will get another four. This time Grace Harris joins in the party of boundary hitting the Bangladeshi bowlers have been expensive in the past eight odd deliveries after that breakthrough by Fariha Trishna getting the wicket of Phoebe Litchfield yeah in fact uh, three boundaries of the last seven balls a much better delivery there is an appeal but the umpire deciding against it probably a bit of bat involved grace harris her name has grace written on it but she's got a lot of muscle and power she bludgeons deliveries and uses it uses her muscle to get those boundaries an appeal there for lbw but vindarathi decides it isn't Flighted in to the leg stump. Grace added Harris tried to nudge it into the leg side, missed it altogether. And two more runs on that occasion, and the fielding has been a mixed bag for the Tigresses. They've had some good moments, some not so good moments, and sometimes it's been costly for them. Much better on this occasion. Nahida Akhtar, the experienced Nahida. She may not be the oldest, but she's got plenty of experience international. And she's one of the leading bowlers for Bangladesh in all formats. Again, coming down the track, but well fielded on this occasion. By mid on, and For Nahida, it's all about building pressure. The captain, she said 180 would be a par score on this wicket. Alisa Healy and her troops have started off decently, but 180 seems a long way away. Again, use of the feet just over the fielder at mid on. And it'll go for a few bounces all the way to the boundary. Four runs. So a good over turns into a very good one for Australia with the boundary the first delivery and one to end it. 
So after six overs, the power play is done. Australia, 40 for one. On this shot, we're looking at this opening combination of Georgia Wareham and Grace Harris. Obviously, Australia, they've uh, made a few changes to their batting lineup. What do you think they're trying to do? Well, sure. Experiment a fair bit. And also, keep winning matches. They are firm believers in continuing with the momentum, extending their winning streaks. Have gone on to script world records in terms of wins across formats though that happened largely under the captaincy of former skipper Meg Lanning and also Rachel Haynes who often stood in instead of Lanning in her absence but in the Healy era they would want to continue with that brand of cricket and an exhibit of that ambition is seen in that lofted drive from Grace Harris which brings another four as Australia romp towards 50. It's been two boundaries in the fifth over and the sixth over two boundaries as well and interestingly in the sixth over we saw a boundary in the first and last delivery and in the seventh over we're seeing again a boundary in the first delivery. What does the bowler do? Rabia better on this occasion still driven for a single and I think that's been one of the biggest differences between the two teams is how they've rotated the strike Bangladesh in general a bit more bogged down a lot more dot deliveries for Australia they know how to rotate the strike after a boundary they change ends make sure the run is are coming the scoreboard is ticking along that's a full toss dealt with will go all the way after a few bounces another boundary in this over and that too from the bat of Grace Harris she moves on to 32 from 20 deliveries a fair bit of vindication for Alisa Healy's decision to promote Grace Harris in the batting order open today with Phoebe Litchfield is motoring along nicely with a flurry of force to her name. Oh, making room for herself, but can't find the gap. Very interestingly, they're targeting that offside because it is the shorter end there. Uh, we're talking about the east side, and that's around 55 meters because of the pitch that's uh, being played on here. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, the captain, has a word with the youngster. 19 years old is Rabia Khan, hails from Borishal. Started out as a pacer and has come to be one of the most promising spinners in Bangladesh women's cricket. Used to play a lot of football at the divisional level, was the highest goal scorer. In the Bongo Mata tournament, came to Dhaka for the first time when she was 10 years old in 2014. And she chose cricket because she used to play a lot of that with her brothers. Brilliant story there for Rabia. And a good end to the over for Australia. Another single that brings up their 50 as well. After seven overs, it's 51 for one. You can tell Rabia she wants to do new things, she wants to challenge herself. You listen to her story and you see the way she goes about her business when she's bowling. She's picked up the most difficult art in cricket, which is leg spin. I'm told she's the heartbeat of the Bangladeshi side. Loves to talk a lot. And if you have a chance to get on the Bangladesh team bus, you'll get a sense of the number of stories she has to tell her teammates. These sort of characters always uplift the spirit in dressing rooms. You need these sort of players, you need these sort of people in any sort of team sport.
swept away beautifully and it's gonna go all the way for a maximum fantastic batting excellent shot from the bat of Grace Harris she moves on to 35 that's the first six of the match it's Shorna Akhtar another leg spinner who has been introduced into the attack doesn't start off well concedes her boundary first ball but has been earmarked to go on to do great things for Bangladeshi cricket is a handy middle order bat as well yeah the thing about Sharna Akhtar is that uh, she's got good numbers so far not the most experienced into her 17th match best bowling figures of 5 for 28 she's got a good average 15 and she's got 12 wickets so far so the chunk of the wickets came in one of those games where she took the five wickets she's got a lot of potential that's for sure hails from Jamalpur my men Singh division all of 17 years she is started watching cricket when she was just seven or eight years old and is a big fan of Hardik Pandya's the India men's all-rounder has played a fair bit of badminton at the divisional level as well and it was during Bangladesh's title winning campaign during the 2018 Asia Cup that she got her first taste of watching Bangladeshi women play cricket on a TV screen again played on the leg side using the power finding the gap and it will be another boundary Grace Harris and Georgia Wareham they're putting on a show here 47 run partnership between the two after the first wicket fell and you're talking about Shorna Akhtar and her journey absolutely you have to look at what the future holds for her and how much Bangladesh cricket is also investing in leg spinners again pulled away will it find the gap yes it does back-to-back -back boundaries just a bit short and punished immediately so the 50 run partnership comes up between Wareham and Harris the fours are coming thick and fast from the Australian batters and it's prompting a lot of fielding changes there's practically no part of the ground that Grace Harris and Georgia Wareham haven't plundered yet. And you're absolutely on the money, Shanur, when it comes to the promise that Shauna Akhtar holds. And you've also got to attribute the fact that Bangladesh are finding the, these young spinners to the Roby spin hunt. Again, cut away, finds the gap. And this time, it'll be another boundary off the bat of Georgia Wareham now Harrison Wareham both getting in on the act Sean Akhtar of course is one of the products of the Roby spin hunt a nationwide spin bowling contest was the number one spinner in 2017 in that competition but here she's hunting for wickets isn't she absolutely but nonetheless this was an expensive over a very good one for Australia they're upping the ante getting closer to that 10 run and over mark and they'll finish this over 8 overs done 71 for 1 Australia at the toss, Alisa Healy said 180 would be a par score here. And now it looks like they're well on track. The last few overs have completely changed the complexion of that match. And the uh, equation as well. 11 runs came in the 7th over, 11 in the 6th. In the 5th over, 10 runs came. And the last one proving to be the most expensive one. With 3 4s and a 6. 20 runs came in the 8th over Shorna Akhtar we know she's young but she has got to come back and deliver something quickly because the Australian batters are making the Bangladesh bowlers pay Marufa Akhtar comes back 
into the attack. Probably a good time to get her back into the mix. Was quite expensive up top in the power play. And was a good ploy on the part of Captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti to give her a bit of time to collect herself and master the kind of plan she wants to execute against the tandem of right-handers in Georgia Wareham and Grace Harris. Much better from the bowler and Maru Faktar making sure the batters don't get too much room. She's got a story to tell as well, Maru Faktar. She comes from very humble beginnings. This is her 19th match, 13 wickets so far. Average of 25, best bowling of 3 for 23. She used to help her father farm. Used to play cricket with her brothers. And that's where her brothers really helped her. This time it's driven though beautifully on the up. And for another boundary. Grace Harris keeps farming fours in this blitz of an innings from her has galloped to the 40s with that four while Georgia Wareham at the other end is sticking along nicely as well on 34 of just 19 deliveries Australia have stepped on the accelerator and Bangladesh are trying to find inroads into what from the looks of it seems an impenetrable Australian batting order it looks an indomitable one, an impressive one, an imperious one. I can go on with the adjectives. Another single taken though. Singles, I think, are something Bangladesh won't mind as long as the boundaries don't come. Just the one boundary in this over so far. Maru Faktar, she's got two more overs left. And under such hot conditions you have to put in a shift you have to be willing to work hard to bowl fast and that's what she's doing as far as the Australian batters are concerned it's a good way of self-preservation you preserve energy by try, trying to hit as many fours instead of working the gaps to rotate strike outside edge and speaking of boundary, there is another one. The second one in this over. Marufa, she'll feel a bit unlucky. Especially because it was a good delivery. Perhaps a second slip there would have resulted in a wicket. It's difficult being a bowler. On Nisha, we're seeing difficult conditions here. It's tough out there for the bowlers under such heat. And then the outside edge is going for boundaries as well. Bangladesh are looking for that second breakthrough. I wonder if Nigar Sultana Jyoti might want to turn to her senior most player in the squad, Fahima Khatun. This time it's swept away. There is a chase on at the boundary and well fielded. Wow, fantastic running between the wickets by the Aussies nonetheless. They got three there, should have been two. But the understanding of how the field is and the understanding of the conditions, I think, with time for Australia has helped them immensely. Wareham and Harris... The partnership now moving on to 69 after nine overs. Australia 87, 84 for one. We were talking about Marufa in her beginning and how she came. And now we can see the change that you wanted, that you advocated for just a while ago. Fahima, she's coming into the attack. She does have this knack for taking those big wickets and delivering under pressure situations. No pressure whatsoever. 
being faced by Grace Harris and Georgia Wareham, have plundered 69 runs in their partnership for the second wicket of just 39 deliveries. Five bowlers deployed. So far, the ball is coming nicely onto the bat. The pacers are being blunted. Goes for the sweep this time around. The ball plonks onto the outfield. Will get perhaps a couple. Excellent running on display so far. It's excruciatingly hot out there, mind you. But aside from those boundaries that they are getting at a very good frequency, both Harris and Verham are ensuring that they keep rotating the strike and keep getting those singles, twos and threes. Absolutely terrific. It's a reflection of their work at the gym as well. One of the most fittest sides in international cricket. Their school is ice. And that's why they're able to perform like this under such heat. Nothing bothers these Aussies. I'm put up at the same hotel as both teams and I can tell you the Australians aren't going out much but they're spending a lot of time at the gym. Beautifully done over the top but won't go all the way. Two more runs added to the total. You look at how fast they're running between the wickets is and you get an idea of how fit they are and how well they're understanding the dimensions of this field. This is now the fifth match they're playing in a row at the home of cricket in Bangladesh, the Meepur Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium. And they know exactly where there uh, are doubles, where there are triples, and where there's singles. And oh, now a directed here might have resulted in a wicket, but still you see how quick they were to take that single. No other team would do that because the fielder was right there inside the 30-yard circle at Gully and still they managed to take a run. And in a way, you are playing with the mind of the opponents as well. Play it straight to the hands of the fielder, but even then manage to extract a single of that delivery. Again, pulled away. Will just be a single. No boundaries in this over so far. Probably I'm about to jinx it now. Fahima. She's been bowling nicely. Against the run of play, it's been an excellent over from senior leg spinner Fahima Khatun. Can she finish off strong? They go down the track. There is a fielder there. It doesn't matter. It goes and goes all the way. The referee yet to really give a signal here. But at first sight, it looked like it was a six. And with that, no matter the outcome, whether it's a six or a four, that will be a well-deserved 50 for Georgia Wareham. Nicely motored along. Coming in at one down. After Australia lost... Open a Phoebe Litchfield. After the end of 10 overs, Australia are 90 for 1. Now, if you add that boundary, potentially 96 or 94 for 1. And we will go straight to Zerin, who's got a few fans with her, I believe, at the Mirpur Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium and see what she's up to.
এবং গত It's a terrific half century from Georgia Wareham. Coming off just 26 deliveries, 9 fours to her tally. Great use of the feet. Has gone on the back foot. Exhibited <coughs> superb front foot stroke. Darshak Bangladesh well. versus Australia bilateral. সিরিজের আজকের দিনে দ্বিতীয় ম্যাচ যেখানে টসে জিতে অস্ট্রেলিয়া কিন্তু ব্যাটিং করার সিদ্ধান্ত নিয়েছে এবং আমরা কিন্তু মাঠে খেলা দেখতে পাচ্ছি এবং গত ম্যাচে আমরা যেটা দেখেছিলাম প্রচুর পরিমাণে নারী দর্শক পেয়েছিলাম গ্যালারিতে আজকে কিন্তু পুরোই আলাদা আজকে প্রচুর পরিমাণে ছেলে দর্শক আমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছি যারা নারীদের খেলা দেখতে এসেছে সো আই থিঙ্ক ইটস এ পজিটিভ সাইড আমরা একটু দর্শকদের সঙ্গে কথা বলবো এবং দেখবো যে তারা আসলে এই যে এক্সাইটমেন্ট এটা আসলে কতটুকু তাদের মধ্যে বিরাজ করছে বাংলাদেশের খেলা দেখতে এসেছেন এই রোদের মধ্যেও কি মনে হচ্ছে যদিও প্রথম টেস্টে বা প্রথম যে ম্যাচ ছিল সেখানে বাংলাদেশ খেলেছে দশ উইকেটে কি মনে হচ্ছে আজকে কেমন করবে অ্যাকচুয়ালি আই হ্যাভ কেম ফ্রম হেয়ার ফর দেয়ার ফর দিস ম্যাচ আমি বুঝতে পারছি যে খেলা অস্ট্রেলিয়া এখন ব্যাটিং করছে সেক্ষেত্রে আমার মনে হচ্ছে তারা খুবই ভালো ব্যাটিং করতেছে বাট আমার মনে কি মনে হচ্ছে যে এখনো পর্যন্ত বাংলাদেশ কিন্তু ভালো বোলিং করছে সো আজকে কত রানে বাংলাদেশ অস্ট্রেলিয়াকে আটকাতে পারে হ্যাঁ অবশ্যই তারাও ভালো ব্যাটিং করতেছে অ্যান্ড আমাদের মেয়েরা তারাও খুব ভালো ইয়ে করতেছে বাট আই হোপ ইনশাল্লাহ আজকের ম্যাচ আমরা জিতব আচ্ছা বাংলাদেশের সবচেয়ে পছন্দের ফেভারিট প্লেয়ার কি আপনার নিগার সুলতানা নিগার ইয়েস আই মিন দ্য ক্যাপ্টেন ইয়া ওকে আপনার আপনার কাছ থেকে একটু যদি জানতে চাই বাংলাদেশের পছন্দের প্লেয়ার কে খুব চেয়ার করছিলেন জ্যোতি জ্যোতি অর জ্যোতি বাংলাদেশ ইয়া জ্যোতি রাইট আপনার নিয়মিত খেলা দেখা হয় দেখা হয় আমার কি মনে হচ্ছে আজকে কে জিতবে আশা করি বাংলাদেশ জিতবে বাট ফার্স্টে বাংলাদেশের শুরুটা অনেক ভালো ছিল এখন একটু মার খাচ্ছে বাট সমস্যা নাই ওভারকাম করবে ইনশাআল্লাহ আমরা ভালো কিছু প্রত্যাশা করি ইনশাআল্লাহ আসলে এটাই আমরা বলতে চাই বাংলাদেশের জন্য একটা চিয়ার আপ হয়ে যাক থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ দর্শক এই হচ্ছে আমাদের গ্যালারির বর্তমান অবস্থায় এই চেয়ারটা একদম শেষ মুহূর্ত পর্যন্ত থাকুক এটাই আমাদের প্রত্যাশা Well, Australia putting on a show here. Another boundary. And Georgia Wareham now, after reaching 50, she is going all guns blazing. That brings up the 100 for Australia in the 11th over. 100 from just 64 deliveries. Grace Harris on 45 from 29. Georgia Wareham currently... Moving on to 656, in fact, from 28. Sharifa continues down the track. Oh, now was that an opportunity for a cotton bolt? She didn't seem to grasp it properly. Nonetheless, these two Australian batters have been displaying the stuff of champions. Shorifa to continue and try and just stymie the flow of runs. Another run added. Australia 
going along their merry way. A 90 run partnership so far between Grace Harris and Georgia Wareham. Eleven overs done. Australia currently a hundred and five for one. One eighty is what Captain Alisa Healy said would be par score on this surface, but at this rate. They might well go on to post 200. Proper fireworks from the Australian batters. What you expect in T20 cricket, in fact. Again, coming down the wicket. Will just be a single this time. You look at the numbers for Wareham and Harris. Harris playing her 44th game. High score of 64. Georgia Wareham currently on 57, which is her highest T20 international score. Played, but straight to the fielder. Finally, the breakthrough comes for Bangladesh. And it's Georgia Wareham who has to depart. Nahida Akhtar, she gets the breakthrough. And gives the batter a bit of a send-off with that celebration, does Nahida Akhtar and some of the fielders. Ended up hitting that straight down the throat of the fielder at deep mid-wicket. Wareham goes for a well-made, brisk, 30 ball, 57. Has set the tone with the bat for Australia. Took turns with Harris to play the role of the aggressor. But this time, found the fielder in the deep. Some much-needed respite for the Bangladeshis. They've been getting pummeled to all parts of the ground in difficult, hot, humid, sweltering conditions. They needed this wicket. They needed to try and slow down the flow of runs. Now can they try and claw their way back into this match? Ashley Gardner, the new batter in. Oh, a very good delivery for her first up by Nahida. No room to play around. Didn't use her feet. It's pitched up at that length where you have to try and use your feet. And when you're a new batter coming in, it's not easy. This time she does use her feet. Does what the doctor ordered, takes a single, retains her strike. 12 overs done, a successful one for Bangladesh. In fact, one more delivery left. And Nahida is a wily bowler, mind you. Imparts a lot of thinking to each and every delivery of hers. Is also pursuing two degrees, one in economics, the other in political science. And here, it is a bowling that is doing the talking. Keeps that last delivery runless. 12 gone. Australia are 107 for 2. You look at the bowling figures. Trishna making her way into the team. Three overs for just 13 runs with the wicket early on. She's been the pick of the bowlers. Marufa. She worked hard, but still got tonked away for plenty. 25 from her two overs. Nahida, 
the leader of the attack she's been exceptional as well 17 runs from her three overs along with the last wicket of Georgia Wareham not much uh, else to really talk about in terms of other bowlers but now Fahima back into the attack she went for 10 in her first over 48 deliveries to go in this innings and I'm pretty certain the Australian batters are looking to score double runs of them comes down the wicket finds the gap and finds the boundary Ash Gardner that's the first one uses her feet gets to the pitch of that ball and gets what she wanted a steady base and launched it into the leg side 1-4 off that 96 that they'd hoped to score at the very least of the last 48 balls of the innings they've got all the license from their captain who's making changes at will to the lineup an opportunity there and is taken Fahima Khatun takes that return catch to send back Ashley Gardner right after she scores a boundary Australia lose their third wicket excellent comeback by the bowler Fahima using her experience not letting the boundary phase her Ash Gardner she was looking to score quick using her feet but eventually on that occasion that didn't work for her losing her wicket didn't really get set to be playing all those shots but you can see and understand what the Australians are looking to do they've got a long batting order so they can take risks they've still got seven more wickets in hand and there you see it very good from the bowler Fahima Khatun this is her 80th match 48th wicket two away from 50 it initially hit her but she was very quick to react and grab it Australia now 111 for three Nelson this number for the likes of David Shepard we've seen he used to do something he used to take a small hop to avoid bad luck and this seems to be an unlucky number for Australia on this occasion Ash Gardner did hit that firmly back to the bowler who latched onto it at the second shot Talia Magra is the new batter and she will bring out an exquisite cover drive that will be cut off with a dive from the fielder at extra cover in the deep lots of muscle still there in this Australian batting lineup and Ash Gardner where she is known to play that kind of cricket that style of cricket slam bang doesn't really mind what her position in the batting order is a chance of a run out there but from the looks of it Talia Magra made her made her way to the non-strikers end quite safely good feeling by Bangladesh nonetheless you have to keep the Australians on their toes this looked pretty close though didn't go to the third umpire but yes from replays it's pretty obvious she made her way back Grace Harris has been in the 40s for a while now yet to get that 50 she's got a high score of 64 McGraw with a high score of 91 and her average of 43 that's immense for T20 internationals comes down the wicket now there is a fielder there can she catch it yes she can that's a wicket Rabia Khan it is who settles nicely underneath that skyer Grace Harris will have to depart Australia lose their fourth wicket in the 13th over two wickets in quick succession in back-to-back -back overs first it was Ashley Gardner who fell victim to Fahima Khatun and this time around it's Fahima again who struck two wickets in the same over 
just seven runs conceded of it. Game changing over it seems. Fahima using all her experience. And at this moment, this is wicket number 50 for Fahima. Excellently judged by the fielder in the deep. Rabia Khan looks up to Mashafe Mortaza, which is why she has number two as a jersey number and fielded much like her idol there. Had to backpedal a little bit after she had taken a few strides in front. Eventually managed to snaffle that catch. Fahima has her second wicket in her second over. And Elise Perry is in the middle now. Excellent second over. A double wicket over, conceding to seven runs. Did Fahima Khatun, 13 gone, Australia are 114 for four. Talia McGrath and Elise Perry have got to try and build a partnership for Australia. The bowling figures now looking better for Bangladesh, especially that of Fahima Khatun. Two over, 17 runs. She's gone for a few, but she's taken the two wickets. Naid Akhtar with one. Fari Islam. Trishna. Trishna in Bengali, it means thirst. And she's shown the thirst and the hunger and desire to play international cricket and take that wicket and bowl well. She's been the pick of the bowlers nonetheless. A fast bowler in these conditions bowling. It's not easy. Rabia Khan, the leg spinner after that catch, will be in operation with the ball. Nudges it to the deep mid wicket fielder for a single. Dastalia Magra. Rabia Khan too comes from a humble background. Her father is a vegetable seller and raises cattle. Is the youngest of five siblings. Again, use of the feet. The Australians, they've uh, just decreased the level of aggression they've been showing early on because of the three quick wickets. They lost one wicket in the 11th over and then two in the 12th. Again, just trying to find the gaps, taking the singles. Both new batters at the crease. They want to get themselves set. It's still a very long batting order for Australia. But Elise Perry, we know what she can do once she gets set. She did a lot of the repair work with the bat during the ODI series for Australia. Stood in the middle, rock solid. This time around she rocks back on the back foot and plays it to the fielder at deep cover for a single. Speaking of being rock solid, the Australians, they have been rock solid with the bat throughout this series. Despite playing in what they've called extreme conditions, almost in every single match, it's their batting that has shown with that being said, that's an other overdone. A good one for Bangladesh. After 14, Australia 118 for four. Fahima to continue. Will that be an opportunity? Just fell short of that point fielder. Into her third over now. Perry and Talia. Can they rebuild here? Again use of the feet coming down the track. And it finds the gap. One bounce to the boundary. 
Elise Perry, she knows what she's doing. Plays an exquisite inside out cover drive to get four. And with that, there's a slight change in the commentary as on Nisha, she was giving us information about all these players. She'll be replaced by Roselle. And two more runs are added to the Australian total. Very good cricket all around on that occasion. But there seems to be a bit of an injury. The diving effort there. Probably hurting the fielder. And it looks like it's Marufa. She's back up though. That's good to see. Good fielding though by Marufa. Yes, so this time just uh, stepping out from the wickets. Pushes and nudges straight to the fielder into the long off region. It's a handsome total. Shanur on the board, 125. Bangladesh got early breakthrough. Phoebe Litchfield's wicket when Australia women were 15. This time off the back foot. And that's an excellent square cut. Races towards the boundary line. Four more runs. Excellently played. And on that occasion by Talia McGrath. That's her first boundary. So two boundaries in this over. Fahima. Can she come up with the goods again? A much better delivery. So 15 overs done. Australia move along to 129 for four. Look at the scorecard. Grace Harris, 47. Unlucky to miss out on her 50. Phoebe Litchfield didn't get too many. Georgia Wareham, really, the pick of the batters, 57 from 30. Ash Gardner got in, played a few shots, got out, and now we've got Talia McGrath, Elise Perry batting. Elisa Healy, the captain, generally opens. She's decided she's going to bring herself lower down the order. Just a flick of the wrist into the onside. Picks up a single from short square leg. The thing is that Alisa Healy is giving opportunity to the rest of the players to play some cricket because World Cup T20 Women World Cup here in this Bangladesh will be placed. You're absolutely right, Roselle. They want to work out their combinations, give everyone an opportunity and see what works best for them. Again, a good looking shot, but straight to the fielder. Rabia, this is into her third over now. The young leg spinner. Has a very nice action. Cut away, but will just be the single. Rabia has shown good control. Being a leg spinner, it's not easy. And as Onnesha told us about Rabia's background and the hardships she's been through and how she's always challenged herself, she's picked the most difficult art in cricket. Oh, Again. this time, full length delivery, swept it really very well. The two fielders chasing the ball. Meanwhile, the two batters took two runs. Couple of runs added to the total. 1-3-3 three, three on the board for four wickets. But one thing is positive, Shanur. Bangladeshi bowlers are getting wickets today. Again and just over the top of the fielder and it will go all the way. A good shot to end the over. Elise Perry showing her array of stroke play. Rabia pitched it up. Perry got to the pitch of it. Found the gap. Bisected the two fielders. 
at cover and deep point. So Australia managing to end the over with a boundary, 137 for four. Let's have a look at the bowling card. Trishna got the early breakthrough for Bangladesh. Took one wicket, one for Nahida Akhtar and two for Fahima Khatun. Nahida Akhtar, 17 runs conceded, bit economical. Today, Nahid Akhtar. Nahid Akhtar bowled really very well against South Africa in the previous T20I series in South Africa. Oh, this time finds the gap and uh, fine leg is exposed. Runner for four. Starting the over with a boundary. Not a good delivery down the leg side and uh, she has got the time, Talia Megrath. It's been an issue for Bangladesh in this match and probably throughout the series as well where they've conceded boundaries in clusters. The last over ended with a boundary, this over begins with a boundary and we've seen that happen on multiple occasions in this match as well. That brings a change in the field because of those shots down the leg side. The square leg goes straight to the boundary, deep square leg. The batter plays the shot there and she has to field but in the meantime they do manage to take a single. Look at the experience for Perry, 153 games, a high score of 75, average of 32 and she's batting with another T20 giant in Dahlia McGrath. She's got a high score of 91 not out and an average of 43. Again, driven off the back foot. Will be another single. Having the understanding of what to do and when to do it. Not trying to be too aggressive. I think that's what separates the Aussies from the rest. Again, use of the feet, but to the fielder. Good stuff by Sharifa in this over, despite conceding the boundary in her first delivery. The next three have gone for two runs. How she finishes this over, though, is what's key. Again, coming down the wicket, straight to the fielder there. Quick single taken. Excellent running between the wickets from these two. Also made a very good partnership as well. Mediocre partnership. Elise Perry back on strike. 17 runs of... Uh, 12 deliveries so far this time a bit down the leg just uh, off the back foot and pushes the ball into the onside Bangladeshi bowlers wouldn't mind singles single to finish off the over 17 gone 145 for 4 you look at it, it's a partnership already between these two batters. 31 run partnership from 25 deliveries. And that's the amazing thing about this Australian batting order. Is that despite losing wickets and they've lost wickets in clusters in this match. Which doesn't generally happen for them. The run rate hasn't slowed down. It's been 8.52 eight nine ten around these for the most part and now this is lofted up will fall safely three fielders after it will be another single and as I was saying with this Australian batting lineup they set a target or they said a par score of 180 is expected on this pitch and they're well and truly on course to getting a similar total. This time again, Driven finds the gap, but uh, there was a fielder into the long off region, just uh, running to his left to collect the ball. Meanwhile, single taken. Back on strike, Talia Megra, 16 of 14. First two deliveries. Three runs conceded from Fahima. Fahima picked up two wickets so far. Shuffled across the line. Looking for a slog sweep into the square. But missed it. 
couldn't read the length as well. Faima finishing her spell here. Already the most successful bowler for Bangladesh in terms of wickets taken. Again, good lines and lengths by her. Realizing that the batter wanted to make room for herself. Cramping her for it. Just a single again. No boundaries in this over. And you look at the number of boundaries the Australians have hit. Ten by the half-centurion Georgia Wareham. Six by Grace Harris. And again, the reverse sweep. But straight to the fielder. A bit of a misfield. The over ends with a single being taken. In fact, one more delivery still left. And Talia McGrath, she will face it. And I was talking about the boundary count. Ash Gardner with one as well. And two each for McGrath and Perry, who are on strike. Now, an inside edge, but to the fielder at short fine leg. Another single. So just six runs from the last over. Australia reached their 150. 151 for four after 18. Bangladesh fighting hard here, but the Aussie aggression continues. They've been dominating the series with bat and with ball. Another partnership underway between the experienced duo of McGraw and Perry. And speaking of experience, Nahida comes back into the attack to finish off her spell. Jyoti has options in Fariha Trishna. Maruf Akhtar, who have one over and two overs left, respectively. Or does she go with the spin of Rabea, who's got one more over left? Only time will tell. Again, the reverse sweep comes out. Straight to the fielder, but a misfield. Again... A carbon copy of what we saw in the last over. Misfield of a reverse sweep. The captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti will not be pleased with what she's seeing. Just telling her players to stay calm, watch the ball and field accordingly. It's not easy under these conditions. Beautifully played. There is a fielder at the deep. So not more than a single on this occasion. It's been good work by Bangladesh in the last few overs. No boundaries in the last over. No boundaries in this over so far. Making room, but that looks close. And the finger from the umpire goes up. Nahida has her second. Talia McGrath has to take the long walk back. She's gone. Gone for 19. LBW by Nahida. Australia losing their fifth wicket. 153 for five. I was talking about good work by the Bangladesh bowlers. The pressure was building on Australia. And eventually, that brings about a wicket. She's been trying that sort of paddle slash slog sweep. Trying to access that fine leg region. Hasn't managed to do so. Perry tried it as well in the last over. Naida's bowled beautifully, 3.3 overs for just 19 runs. Bangladesh know they have an uphill task regardless, given how well the Australians have bowled. 
Getting anything over 150 will not be easy. Again, Perry checks her shot, thought of coming down the wicket and then waited because Nahida saw her coming down the wicket and just brought her length back, not letting Perry go for that shot over the infield. This time she goes straighter. It will just be another single. So 19 overs done. Australia 155 for 5. Grace Harris and Georgia Wareham, the pick of the batters for Australia. Talia McGrath, she scored 19 from 19. Ellis Perry still there, 24 from 19. Annabelle Sutherland has joined her. The new batter at the crease. Naida just finished her bowling figures. And now Trishna has been given the final over. Driven nicely, finds the gap. Will it go all the way? Yes, it does. Through the covers, Ellis Perry gets her cover drive going for four once again. It's the second time she's done it this innings. Moves on to 28. Beautifully bisecting two fielders there at the deep. There is a long off and a, an extra cover. Trishna once again being swept this time. Just a single. She's been really good, brought back into the team. As I say it, it's lofted. There is a fielder, but it just lands short of her. Fahima was the fielder at long on. So despite conceding the boundary in the first delivery, it's been a good comeback by this young left arm pacer. Again, it's a lofted shot, and it goes straight to the hands of the fielder at extra cover. Shorna takes the catch. Trishna has wicket number two, and it's a biggie because it's the wicket of Elise Perry, who departs for 29 from 22 deliveries. Australia stuttering near the death. There are 161 for six. Once again, Perry played quite a few of those shots through extra cover, and this time the fielder finds it. She managed to bisect the fielders on previous occasions when she played lofted shots or even grounded ones. But Trishna held her nerve, kept those lines and lengths right kept bowling at that channel that would induce these sort of shots Sophie Molyneux the new batter so it looks like Alisa Healy is still holding off on batting in this innings she's probably not going to have a bat given how long this Australian batting order is Wicketkeeper Jyoti standing up for the medium pacer Trishna. It's wide, it's cut away, but straight to the fielder. Back to back wickets for Trishna. She has her third. And it's a golden duck for Sophie Molyneux. 
Australia losing wickets in a heap and Krishna's on a hat trick. Australia now 161 for 7 as Molyneux departs without disturbing the scorers. Krishna managing to induce these shots from the batters as they try and go over the top. Managing to find the fielders. It's excellent captaincy and excellent bowling as well. Captaincy from Nigar Sultana Jyoti has been very good and she said at the toss it's a good one to lose because she would have chosen to bowl first as well. On the previous two occasions she won and the matches that were played on this wicket. She chose to bat first. Krishna on a hat trick. Oh, the appeal is there. It's going down leg perhaps. No! Oh my goodness! Krishna, she's got her hat trick. She's done the trick. And Australia, they lose three in a row. Three wickets in three successful and successive deliveries for Bangladesh as Beth Mooney gone for a duck as well and brilliant bowling by Trishna the young left arm pacer disturbing the stumps at one moment it looked like it was going down leg there might have been a chance for the stumping but you saw the celebration from the captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti as the bales were dislodged by the ball and Beth Mooney was bold. Fariha Trishna, previously she had 11 wickets and now, today, this is her best bowling innings. 4 for 19. And a hat trick for Trishna. So that's the batting card for Australia. Georgia Wareham and Grace Harris, the two batters who have done most of the damage. In the end, Sophie Molyneux, Beth Mooney and Annabel Sutherland all falling cheaply. Elise Perry, Molyneux and Mooney being the three batters who were part of that hat-trick by Trishna. Faria Trishna, I said she was the pick of the bowlers when she was on one wicket. She ended up with four. Four for 19 in her four overs. And the other bowlers who had success, Nahid Akhtar, the leading leg spinner, the leading spinner in this country, off spinner. And, of course, Faima Khatun, as far as leg spinners go, she took two as well. Bangladesh restricting Australia to 161. Partnerships there for the second wicket, 91 runs from just 54 deliveries. Perhaps a game-changing one for Australia between Georgia Wareham and Grace Harris. And the other one, Elise Perry and Talia McGrath putting on 39 from 34. Australia were looking good for a 200 plus total, but eventually ending up on 161 and what a final over by Faria Trishna where she conceded just six runs and took those three wickets Australia mind you won the toss and elected to bat first their captain Alisa Healy said 180 would be par for the course here on this pitch. They managed 18 runs less. But given the bowling attack they have, it will be a daunting task for Bangladesh to chase these down as they look to square the series and Australia look to win this series and continue their winning ways.
We'll go for the mid-inning show in a bit. Down at the ground, waiting with us is Rosel and Omnesha, who will join us in a bit to discuss the events that have just unfolded in front of us. And after that, we'll bring you live commentary from the second innings. The Bangladesh run chase will follow, so don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Check, 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 one, two, check. check, check, check. Hello and welcome to Mid Innings Show. And uh, I'm alongside with Onesha Ghosh. Levert. Australian side we are talking about and to clean up three of their premier batters starting off with Elise Perry, Sophie Molyneux and finish it up with Beth Mooney's wicket tells you something about the caliber of this 21 year old left arm pacer. And also Bangladesh showed some positive energy while they were bowling. Uh, look, they started well and uh, Trishna got the breakthrough for Bangladesh and also finished it in a style. 
for certain, topping and tailing the inning, so to speak, bold and unbroken spell up top, three overs, came back to take those three wickets in the form of a hat-trick. Fahima Khatun, the first Bangladeshi woman to pick up a hat-trick, uh, that happened in 2018, was also in the thick of things, took a couple of wickets, but I think it was her 13th over, a double wicket over, which changed the flow of the momentum. She took out Ashley Gardner and Grace Harris in the span of uh, four odd deliveries. And after Georgia Wareham, the half centurion, fell, Australia managed to score only about 55 odd runs for the loss of seven wickets of 51 odd deliveries. So there was indeed a sort of mini collapse. Well, a full ball blown collapse, in fact, uh, from the Australian side. Yeah, Bangladesh bowled well, started well, apart from that. Excellent partnership, 91 runs partnership between Grace Harris and Georgia Wareham. So they played really very well and very good partnership. And uh, also Alisa Healy, she told in the toss that uh, Australia women would score nearly about 180 runs, but uh, they scored finally 161 runs. Sure, they fell 20 runs short of uh, what they would have ideally expected, but it was good to see the rejig in the batting lineup. They did not opt for the obvious uh, opening tandem in Alisa Healy and Beth Mooney. Phoebe Litchfield, the left hander, opened with Grace Harris. Grace Harris, on her part, played a great knock, but was unlucky to not get a 50. It was Georgia Wareham who added some momentum into the innings. Uh, she was using her feet extremely well found the gaps, found the boundaries at will, and uh, they will, however, look to be confident in terms of defending 161. Bangladesh, for their part, ended up posting 126 in the first match. Can they try and getting the better of Australia in the second T20I and level the series? That remains to be seen. Yeah, leading on to it, that Bangladesh got some runs in the previous T20I. So, will they get over the line in this game? Though. Score, uh, scorecard is very high, 162. Let's see. A lot will depend on their captain, Nigar Sultana Jyoti. And it's time now to get back to the field of play where the action begins shortly. So the second innings is about to begin and the Bangladesh run chase will be underway. The two openers are out there in the middle. Bangladesh will require 162, a daunting task in front of them against this powerhouse of an Australian bowling attack as well. They've got all sorts of options. And it will be pace to begin things. Beautifully driven, and that will go all the way for four runs. A great way to start the innings with a boundary. Dilara getting off the mark with a boundary. She's joined by Murshida at the other end. Megan shoot. She made her way back into the starting 11 and was immediately hit for a boundary a good comeback by her full the batter tried to play it on the offside as well failed to get bat on ball now that side of the field is the shorter region as we're playing on pitch number four and from the media end the offside is the shorter area of the ground over the top gets bat on ball great connection a few bounces over long off and it'll be another boundary Dilar Akhtar making her intentions clear we saw some exquisite cover driving by the Australians especially Elise Perry and now we're seeing some from Bangladesh as well. Great front foot play. And that's a bouncer. It goes up but lands safely. Dilara generally looking to play on the front foot and put Bangladesh on the front foot as well. 
on that occasion the top edge was induced but luckily for her she wasn't out so two more runs added to the total Oh, now that was close. Dilara swinging at it. Not the best of shots there. It was outside of the way she had been driving. It was the sort of delivery where you bring your front foot and drive through the covers. She wanted to play across the line. Had she gotten bat and ball, might have ended up hitting the stumps. This is much better from Dilara. Another fuller length delivery which has been very nicely dealt with for the second boundary through the offside in this over. The third boundary overall in this over and Bangladesh are off to a flyer. 14 for no loss in the first over. Second over is about to begin. A few smatterings of... Uh, people in some of the stands more and more people might come in to watch the game if Bangladesh makes this a very interesting chase and they're off to a good start and in common box I'm joined by Onnesha Ghosh welcome back Onnesha thank you very much Shano. you've been having to work overtime from the com box down there in the middle for the mid-match show and back again here no complaints whatsoever was terrific watching Fariha Trishna take that hat-trick from close to the boundary and Bangladesh seem to have taken the momentum from the end of their bowling innings into their batting carting Megan shoot for 14 runs including three boundaries in the opening over to set the ball rolling in their chase of 162 Elise Perry who did not bowl in the first game will share the new ball interesting choice there but what an achievement for Fariha Trishna the second ever Bangladeshi bowler to take a T20I hat-trick after Fa Fahima Khatun yeah, and that was Trishna's second hat-trick in her career and the third T20I hat-trick overall for Bangladesh in T20 internationals as we see Australia suffering from the number of wides that they've given in this tour and that continues with this Elise Perry over Bangladesh opted for two pacers in this match and bringing Trishna into the attack and into the team has paid rich dividends for the captain and the team another wide starts off erroneously does Elise Perry was one of the victims in Fariha Trishna's Momentous hat-trick, Trishna's second T20I hat-trick, the first one she took during the Asia Cup in 2022 on her T20I debut. Does go on to tell you something about her potential and her ability to deliver under pressure. Bangladesh will have to deal with the pressure, deal with the fire that the Australians are bringing in the field during batting and during bowling excellent running there from left-hander Murshida Khatun had notched the ball into the leg side towards short mid wicket was able to steal a single will bring Dila Dilara Akhtar back on strike who struck three glorious falls in that opening over of Megan Shoots Shoot, mind you, has come into the Australian 11 in the place of Taylor Vlaiming and didn't start off the way she would have ideally want to, nor has Perry herself conceding two wides up top at the start of the second over. The left right combination perhaps uh, being a bit of a bother. Again, driven and goes past the fielder. It was a bit uppish, but will go for another boundary. 
The first one in this over, four boundaries overall, and all coming from the bat of Dilara Akhtar. Went for the drive, was in the air, the ball, and was within the reach of the fielder at backward point, very wide gully. Australia have packed the infield on the offside for the right-hander, Akhtar, but she's still managing to find the boundaries. A swing and a miss this time. Excellent start. 21 already of the nine legitimate deliveries sent down by Australia. Off to a flyer after that sensational one ball, one over spell from Fariha Trishna. Her first hat trick, mind you, came against Malaysia, a much lower ranked side. But this one against Australia is one for the ages, isn't it? Fantastic. And one of the best bowling performances in Bangladesh T20I cricket history, I'd say. It's not a bowling friendly surface. It's not a bowler friendly surface. And she took four wickets and four of the highest caliber in these Australian names. You look at them, Elise Perry was one of them. And that tells you the bowling effort she's put in. The question is why she wasn't in the side earlier. Because we knew about Trishna's potential when we saw her earlier for Bangladesh in the national team colors. Before Marufa, in fact, she made her way into this national team. And then Marufa came in and she took the world by storm uh, with her fast bowling exploits. Now, will that be a wide? Yes, it is. It's a bit too wide, and that's the third wide in this over by Elise Perry. Struggling to keep it within the tram lines is Elise Perry. Yeah, and when you look at the choice Nigar Sultana Jyoti made in terms of ensuring that Fariha Trishna gets a game today, it brought her great dividends, was supremely effective in her opening three over spell again trying to swing across the line not the sort of shot you should be playing she's much better off playing the drives and we've seen her score boundaries with proper cricketing shots that's the one shot that hasn't brought her anything and had she gotten bad on ball you never know it could pop up for a top edge go straight to a fielder it could even result in an inside edge and hit the stumps it's not needed at this moment the power play overs are on. Bangladesh can take advantage by playing proper cricketing shots. Again, exactly what I was talking about. I think this time it did get the inside part of the bat. And a dot ball finishes the second over. Bangladesh nonetheless in a good position after two overs. 22 for no loss. Only three players in cricket history, T20I cricket history, in women's uh, cricket have taken two hat-tricks. Faria Trishna, one of them. The other two, Kerry Chan and C. Akewo. Healy has decided to throw the ball to off-spinner Ashley Gardner. And it was her wicket I felt, I felt during the 13th over delivered by Fahima Khatun that changed the momentum. It turned out to be a double wicket over with Grace Harris soon following in the footsteps of Gardner back to the pavilion. Some turn and bounce on offer for Ash Gardner. Murshida really hasn't faced much of the strike. She faced two deliveries in the last two overs, and now this is her third one. Uh, in fact, her second delivery. She faced only one delivery in the first two overs. Left-right combo for Bangladesh in the opening. Oh, again, that really was there to be hit. Unfortunate or fortunate, I should say, for the bowler that she wasn't punished on that occasion. 
she's trying to go on the back foot to perfect that cut this time around comes down the track but doesn't manage to eke out a single and i think that's the difference between the two teams on nesha because you saw australia taking singles rotating the strike of these sort of deliveries bangladesh not being able to do that the way georgia wareham and grace harris rotated strike during their 50 plus partnership was astounding given the conditions here sultry muggy quite unfamiliar the australians are to what it is like playing a t20i with a 12 known start time in the subcontinent a lot of these australians have played the wpl across the border in india but this year all the matches happened after 6:30 pm oh now that could have resulted in a wicket dilara akhtar once again swinging across the line that's the first ball of spin she's faced dilara akhtar she's played only 5 matches before this a high score of 18 this is her highest t20 score and now this time she got but she gets bat on ball and deposits it all the way one bounce for four lunges forward and goes for the slog sweep manages to connect this time and will get due rewards for her enterprise with a boundary way out of the reach of elise perry at deep square leg three gone bangladesh at 27 without no loss how good a start is that for the home team it's a very good start and exactly what you need in such a steep run chase bangladesh have have got to make use of the power play overs dilar akhtar for once playing across the line and getting good connection she's shown a lot of power 13 balls 22 runs bangladesh requiring 135 from 102 but for bangladesh's sake they need to rotate the strike a bit more because the number of dot balls even in the last over there were four in the second over there were four in the first over there were three and to all the viewers joining us in this live stream from around the world fasten your seat belts for this could be a close contest again use of the feet this time but another dot ball in murshida while dilara has been batting brilliantly from one end the left hander has struggled a bit she's gotten just two runs from her six deliveries sophie mallin you again this time it's hit well but straight to the fielder it was struck very well unfortunately for the batter it didn't go into the gap the two teams bangladesh and australia have only ever played 3 t20is between them australia winning all three can the result be different lofted towards the cover fielder chance of a run out as well but murshida evades both the equation right now does give you a sense that it's gettable but bangladesh will need to show patience trade caution with aggression at times rotate the strike frequently and of course found those boundaries which australia were able to do so well during their their innings again it's lock swept but there is a fielder at the deep australia were converting these sort of shots into doubles that's another difference between the two teams we've seen how well australia ran between the wickets and compare that with what bangladesh are doing and the number of dot balls australia conceded compare that with what bangladesh are getting bangladesh had just managed 28 in the power play in the first t20i here in just the fourth over they have crossed that power play tally without mind you losing any wickets in the first game they had lost two during the first six overs here they have managed to score runs and also ensure that their openers are still out there in the middle or she does on strike again tries to break free 
a misfield, a rare misfield by the Aussies, and she will take a single. But it's been an excellent over. Sophie Molyneux, what a tour she's having. She's been excellent with the ball. Three runs off it. After four overs, Bangladesh a 30 without loss. The equation is 132 required from 96. 10 wickets in hand for Bangladesh. But that might be one equation. You look at the Australian bowling lineup and the variety that they have and the quality and class that they have. It's a steep ask nonetheless. Been a mixed bag so far as far as Australia's bowling performance and outing on the field is concerned. You've seen a 14-run opening over from Megan Shoot, a misfield from Phoebe Litchfield. Neither is something you would associate with an Australian side often in T20Is. Beautifully played from, from the bat of Murshida this time. And she really needed that boundary. Megan Shoot coming back into the attack and into the side and being carted away for four more runs in her second over. She's been expensive. Delectable, full extension of the arms from the left-hander. And off the ball went for a first ball four in the second over of Megan Shoot. Again, looking for that big shot. And it results in a wicket. Yes, the umpire raises his finger. Murshida Khatun isn't happy though. She continues to stand her ground. Somebody's got to tell her there's no DRS, unfortunately. Alisa Healy was quick to appeal. The umpire took some time before making his decision. Was it a stumping? From the looks of it, that appears to be the mode of dismissal. That looks very tight from these camera angles on Nasha. Superb glove work from the captain. Very quick, taking the bails off after collecting the ball cleanly. She too had a bit of an iffy outing in the first match behind the stumps. Though was on fire with the bat, taking the player of the match award, did Alisa Healy. And here she combines again with Megan Shoot, as she often has throughout the course of the pair's international career, to give Australia the breakthrough. Murshida Khatun, you can see, was late to react and ground her bat in her follow-through. Following that shot of hers, has to depart for just eight runs. I don't know about you, Annesha, but to me it seemed like a part of her foot might have been behind the crease, but at the end of the day, what the umpire says is the final decision. But there is very little room for speculation because when you don't have resort to technology in the form of the DRS, there's very little that you can do as a batter or an umpire. Umpire Morshid Ali Khan raised the finger. After receiving the signal from Rindarati, who was there at the leg umpire. Bangladesh losing their first wicket and a successful over so far for Megan Shoot, despite going for a boundary in her first delivery. Yeah, she would be heaving a sigh of relief. Bold and expensive 14 run opening over was flayed for another four to open her second over. But it was some magic behind the stumps and with the gloves from Alisa Healy that got the breakthrough for the visitors. 
Shayad, this comes from Phoebe Litchfield. Australia trying to wrestle back the ascendancy from the hosts after the Lara Akhtar, the aggressor, kept finding those boundaries and set the tone of the innings. Again, she's made a good comeback, Megan Shoot. Subhana Mustari, the new batter, she's trying to use the width but not managing to get bat on ball. She's being tempted into those cut shots. Smart bowling by Megan Shoot, must be said. This time it does find the gap. Sovana Mustari is off the mark with a boundary from the final ball in the fifth over. Bangladesh after 5, 38 for 1. Rocked back and threw her hands at it, bisected the point and the backward point fielders superbly to close out the fifth over with another four. Eight runs of that second Megan shoot over. She's now conceded 14 and 8 and taken the solitary wicket that Australia have been able to get so far. The key to Bangladesh's fortunes today might be Dilara Akhtar, who's shown great enterprise and fluency to kick off this chase of 162. Shobhana Mostari, for her part, will try and bide her time a little bit. She's not been in the best of form. Hasn't been able to cross 20 in the three innings she's played on this tour. Elise Perry to continue with the ball. And in the commentary box, Roselle will replace Shahanur. Thank you very much, Onisha. So you're talking about Dilara. Dilara got the chance in the T20i series that earlier I mentioned. And uh, she has got the opportunity to show his, uh, her capability here in this match. 24 of 15 deliveries so far. Subhana Mostari now is a strike. Alice Perry. Bowled into the off stump, driven straight to Phoebe Litchfield. Decides against the single. Probably a wise choice at the end. Shovana Mostri, of course, is 22 years old. Has played 33 T20Is with the highest score of 30. Not a lot of experience against the top sides. Dilara Akhtar, it seems, will need some medical attention. There was a little bit of a mix-up with that call from Shobana Mostari for that single. And Bangladesh would hope it's not too big a thing to have a headache about as far as this hold-up is concerned. It's been an enterprising innings from Dilara Akhtar so far. She single-handedly managed to eke out the majority of the boundaries that Bangladesh have scored so far in their chase of 162. Continuing with the momentum that Fariha Trishna gave them with that superlative 20th over during which she Took her second T20I hat trick and third overall of Bangladesh's in the format. Australia have not been as economical in the power play as they would have wanted to. Have had one misfield as well, of which the Bangladeshis managed to 
extract a single. Very unusual as far as their ground fielding is concerned. But that is what pressure can do to even the best of the sides in the world. And there are few better than this Australian team, mind you, in world cricket across the men's and the women's game. Yeah, definitely. Six-time World T20 champion, this women team, Australia women. They'll be back in this country in about five months' time to defend their T20 crown in September, October as the ICC Women's T20 World Cup gets underway. The ninth edition of the tournament will be played here. Some matches are likely to be held at this very stadium, while Silhet could also get a few games. Australia, from what I understand, will definitely play a few round games in Silhet, as will India. Proceedings resume here in Dhaka. It's a good delivery from Alice Perry. Uh, one thing to be noticed, Onesha, Alice Perry didn't bowl in the previous T20I, but this time today she is bowling. Maybe a little bit practice before finishing the series. They also have Annabelle Sutherland and Talia Magra, aside from Elise Perry and Megan Shute, as far as their pace bowling resources are concerned. Oh, this time looking for a cross batted shot, but missed it. It's good delivery from Alice Perry. Bangladesh started well, what Nigar Sultana Jyoti would have wanted. But let's see, Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh batters, they have ample resources to get over the line today because the start is very good. Played on the back foot, was up in the air and has it been taken or did it fall short? Fell short it appears. Australia will be mindful of the number of extras they concede. Bangladesh, remember, conceded none during their allocation of 20 overs. Quite the study in contrast as far as the extras conceded is concerned. Magnificent performance by the bowlers of Bangladesh women. Perry to Dilara. This time, depth of the wicket and looking to drive into the onside. Big inside edge as well. We'll get an inside edge only. Six down and Bangladesh finish the power play with 40 on the board for the loss of one wicket. Let's have a look at the bowling card. Just a one wicket down for Bangladesh. Megan Shoot got the wicket. And Megan Shoot expensive as at the same time. 22 runs in his two overs. Sophie Molino, the most economical of the, of the lot. And she's already taken five wickets on this surface across two matches. The second ODI and the first T20I, pitch number nine. Ashley Gardner will continue from the press box end. Starts up with a runless delivery. Shobhana Mostri obviously had fallen to Taylor Vlaimink of the Pacers. Third ball, this time around, she will have to depart off the bowling of Ashley Gardner. And it's the second stumping to the name of Captain Anissa Healy. Wily glove work from the veteran. And Ash Gardner will pick up her first wicket of the match with just the second delivery of a second over. Bangladesh lose their second wicket. 
right after the close of the power play. And Mostari, who got a duck in the first T20i, manages to make only five runs in the second. Had danced down the surface. And it proved to be fatal for her in this innings. The umpires will check the stumping. Can be close. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just a matter of a frame. Yeah, it's pretty close. Tough to call. When she just landed his bat at the same time, Alisa Healy takes the bail off. So it's pretty close. 50-50 call. I think so. There appears to be a gap between the bat and the turf when Alisa Healy and her gloves impact the top of the stumps. Will the decision go in favor of the batter? Should be. I think should be. Benefit of batsman. A batter. Bigger burden. But let's see finally what the umpires decide. It's really a very close call. But finally decided out. Yep given in favor of the visitors which in my view is perhaps the right decision there looked to be a bit of a gap between the pitch and Mostari's bat upon the impact between Healy's gloves and the Wales Bangladesh lose their second wicket thanks to the second stumping effected at lightning quick pace by Lisa Healy she looked confident from the get-go well the first one appears to be to have been given a caught behind not a stumping of Megan shoot regardless two wickets for Australia with the involvement of Alisa Healy New batter, captain him herself, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, just uh, off the back foot and pushes the ball into the onside of the mark as well. Nigar Sultana Jyoti coming off back to back 50s against Australia in T20Is, separated by over a year. She loves to play against Australia, no doubt about that. Scored an unbeaten 63 in the first T20I, did Nigar? And yes, she did. Will have to play a key role with the bat again if Bangladesh are to give themselves a chance to get closer to that 162 run target. It's a great opportunity for them to showcase their batting prowess. Oh no, leading edge and uh, just to beat the fielder running towards the boundary line. Oh, that's a great save. Really fielding there. At least saved two runs. And a few strokes of luck, like that one, might come in handy for the Bangladeshi batters. Grace Harris appeared to have run out of steam towards the closing phase of that save. But well done to Harris on keeping it to just two. Bit of turn she got. Just again went to his left and uh, pushes the ball into the offside straight to the cover point fielder there. Ashley Gardner finishes her third over, conceding just three of it and took a wicket as well. Seven gone, Bangladesh are 43 for two. Nigar Sultana Jyoti, the two-drop batter, 
played the anchor role in the first T20I, stitching together 250 partnerships for the third and fourth wickets, first with Murshida Khatun and then with Fahima Khatun. And after the end of the seventh over, Australia have opted for another bowling change with leg spinner Georgia Wareham coming in. Had a great day with the bat. Did Wareham was promoted to number three and scored a 26 ball 50 in that position. Showed a great range during her innings. There is a there is an appeal was potentially an inside edge nod of the head from Brindarati and during Australia's batting innings Verum's wicket did prove a turning point after that dismissal Australia managed to score only 55 odd runs from 51 deliveries losing as many as seven wickets yeah absolutely and uh, bangladesh got the momentum from there so let's see can they get over the line which is very important for bangladesh to be alive in the t20i series wareham has not conceded a run of a first for delivery so far This time around, Nigar Sultana Jyoti manages to get off the strike. Does she? She doesn't. Five consecutive dot balls inching towards a maiden is Vairam. Again using her feet. This time big outside edge and a straight to the filler short third. Vairam starts off with a maiden after scoring a 50 for Australia. Bangladesh are 43 for 2 after the end of 8 overs, chasing 162. And an improbable, perhaps, series leveling victory. Improbable if you look at the head to head equation of these two teams, have faced each other off only three times in the format. Australia have gone on to win all three. First time during the 2020 T20 World Cup in Australia. Their second win coming last year during the competition in South Africa. And their third and most recent triumph, of course, came during the opening match of their first ever bilateral T20I against Bangladesh in this country, just two days ago on Sunday. Sophie Molyneux will continue from the press box end has been miserly with her left arm spin across the tour and in her first over. Oh, that's an excellent slog sweep. Though, find a fielder there into the in-between mid-wicket and square leg region. But uh, showed some aggression. Dilara. 27 of 22. Nigar Sultana Jyoti back on strike. And the Australians have already managed to stem the run flow after the close of the power play with Ash Gardner taking that second wicket, of course. Bangladesh managed to score 40 for the loss of one wicket in their first six overs. Have managed just four runs since yeah, pretty tight bowling and uh, giving the pressure onto the opposition, Australia. And it may not be long before we see more spin and operation, probably in the form of the part time off spin of Grace Harris. This time again comes down the wicket straight to the fielder. She finds Nigar Sultana Jyoti. She has to go back to the pavilion. That's an important breakthrough once again from Sophie Molinu. That's a body blow for Bangladesh. Could prove to be 
a debilitating one as Sophie Molyneux, ever so effective, strikes once again on this tour. Conceded only three runs in her first over, picks up her first wicket in her second. Nigar Sultana Jyoti tried to clear the infield but ended up holding out to Annabel Sutherland at short mid wicket. Didn't get the elevation she wanted. How do Bangladesh respond from here on? They could unravel like a pack of cards and their dugout would be wary of that as would be their coaching staff. With each dismissal, the wind might look to be slipping away, but they need to bear in mind that they have the chance to play out all 20 overs and try and get as close as they can to that 162 run target. Fahima Khatun, new batter comes in. Just uh, first ball, defended straight back to the bowler. Bangladesh is under pressure right at the moment. 8.5 overs gone, 44 runs on the board, three wickets down. This time that's a short piece delivery. Pulls it, but bit of lazy. A two run over from Sophie Molino with the key wicket of Captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti. To finish the ninth of the chase, Bangladesh have slumped to 45 for three. Sophie Molyneux has now taken at least one wicket in eight of her last 10 T20I innings and ODI innings as well across Australia's tour of Bangladesh and the WPL. A full delivery, but there was a fair bit of bounce which made the ball escape the reach of Alisa Healy. Bangladesh will pick up a single. Pretty flat wicket surface produces a bit of extra bit of bounce and turn as well. This time again coming down the wicket driven. But there is a filler into the backward square leg region. Single for Fahima. Dilar Akhtar back on strike 27 of 22 and uh, she is uh, playing like a lone warrior so far from the very beginning of the match uh, innings in fact the need of the hour is partnerships which Bangladesh were able to stitch reasonably well in the first T20I 250 plus stands in that first game albeit in a losing cause and here after the loss of three wickets inside the first ten overs they will need to find those partnerships sneaking through the gates gone just misjudged the length of the delivery of the back foot tried to drag the ball into the onside and a straight to the clip straight to the off stump and clipping the bills that's gone that's curtains for dilar akhtar scored a flurry of fours up top eventually finishes on a 25 ball 27 five fours in that tally of hers but got stuck after the power play and this time around, 
Georgia Wareham's leg spin proves too good for the right hand opener. Australia lose their Bangladesh lose their fourth wicket. And it's the spinners who've done the majority of the damage so far. Ash Gardner, Sophie Molino, Georgia Wareham all picking up a wicket apiece. Megan Shoot, the right arm pacer, was the first to pick up a wicket though. Removing opener Murshida Khatun. Was definitely caught behind by Alisa Healy, who was in the thick of things again with the dismissal of Shobhana Mostri. A vilely quick stumping. The decision given in favour of the fielding side by the third umpire after a long deliberation. Time for a change in the commentary box. Bangladesh versus Australia bilateral T20 series. The two innings are played in today's match. Boom! Bola jai jab prothom je amader match chilo shethe theke kintu Bangladesh achke tulona mulok bhalo kore chhe Bangladesh jodio tosse khere chhe. Bang ei mutte Bangladesh achhe batting e. Bang ami amar hatte dan pashe je audience achhe tadhe kache kitu chole jabo. Tadhe kache kame kitu shon chilam tarar Trishnaar besh prashongsha kore chile. Bang korari kotha Trishnaar kintu achke neme kintu chatta wicket niye chhe. So apna bol chile Trishnaar bowling shampo ke kamo lag lagche tar bowling dekhe. त्रिशनासी खूब भालो बॉलिंग कोड़े छे, ओ ओ अनेक दिन पड़े जस्ट आज के वो फास्ट मैच, शेषे पे तार स्टार्टिंग टक खूब भालो चिलो, एवं शे हैटिक कोड़े छे, तो टीम जोरो ऐट खूब भालो एक टैचिपमेंट, सो आशा करे तारे परफॉर्मेंसेज जोनो टीम खूब भालो एक रिजल्ट कोड़ बेस के आह आशुले अमितो आशा वादी अवश्य ही चेस कोत्ते पार बे कारण आपने देखन ओपनिंग पार्टनरशिप को भी भालो होते हैं तो शेखे तो अवश्य ही अमित आशा वादी जे मैं मैस्टर को भालो हो बे बालंच भालो हो बे शेष को अच्छा आपने किसी भी बोल सीने ना तो अमित जो दे छोटो को ले जिगेश को ले बांग्लादेश आगे तो जहाँ रापो के भालो लगतो और एक फ़ोन उस वाबे काउ के ये कोरी ना मारुफर बोलिंग क्या मन मने है एक फ़ोन मारुफर ने भालो बोलिंग करती से और एक फ़ोन मारुफर बोलिंग ही भालो लगे आपने किस जोती जिगेश कोरी आपने पाँचवां दर प्लेयर के बांग्लादेशे निगर सोल्टन है जोती थैंक यू जोती � आमार जो तेरे ओने भाव लगे एवं कि उनका खेला उनका व्यक्तित्व शॉप दिख दिया उनके भाव लगे तो आशा करते सी जी जो तेरे पुर नेत्रित बांग्लादेश शारों बहुत दूर एक ये जाक एवं जो तेरे पुर जोन एवं कि बांग्लादेश टीम एक जोनों शुभ का मना एवं कि जो तेरे पुर भालो परफॉर्मेंस करते से भालो Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We heard about Nigar Sultan Jyoti Bangladesh captain Bangladesh skipper. But there is a lot of fans, a lot of followers. Today, there is a lot of fans. But there is a lot of fans. Today, there is a lot of fans. Today, there is a lot of fans. Thank you. Well, Bangladesh in all sorts of bother at this moment. The outside edge will result in a few runs though. Excellent fielding effort there at the deep, at the deep third region. Grace Harris putting in that brilliant dive to save what looked like an inevitable boundary is appreciated by Georgia Wareham who ran all the way from <laughs> fine leg to give Harris a bit of a pat on her back. Sutherland to continue. Nicely driven by Sean Akhtar, but excellent fielding there at the cover point region. And it's an issue I've been talking about, the amount of dot balls Bangladesh struggle with. They started off well, the first three overs, the run rate was over 10. 
And then now you look at how they've been bogged down and credit to the Australian bowling as well. Certainly they've come back extremely well after that quick start from Bangladesh's openers, Dilara Akhtar in particular. Fahima Khatun and Shorna Akhtar in the middle. Shorna Akhtar is a frontline leg spinner but has a decent middle order bat as well. Has a five wicket haul to her name. Another slower delivery. The batter Fahima Khatun planting her front foot early. The intention is clear by Annabel Sutherland. She wants to take pace off the ball on this sort of a wicket try and deceive the batter into playing early looping the ball up for a catch five on five from seven again played on the leg side one more run just the three in the over Bangladesh bring up their 50 after 11 overs it's 51 for four Great bowling figures there. Megan Shoot with one wicket. She was a bit expensive early on. Still got the breakthrough. Ash Gardner with eight runs taking a wicket. The spinners have really done a job. Sophie Molyneux as well. Just five runs from her two overs for the one wicket. And Bangladesh, they've got a mountain to climb. Still need 111 from 54 deliveries. The runs have dried up. The slog sweep is employed, but won't find the gap. Will just be a single. Georgia Wareham into her third over. She's been another spinner who's been brilliant. Four runs from those 13 deliveries and a wicket as well. Came down the pitch, did Shauna Akhtar and will get a boundary. Lock sweep happens to be Shorna's favorite shot, but here some wrist work and decent footwork will do the trick for her. First four to the name of the 17 year old was included in the senior women's T20 World Cup squad in 2023, right after the T20 under 19 women's World Cup. Was there an opportunity, an opportunity perhaps gone a begging? A chance perhaps for a stumping. For certain, Alisa Haley couldn't collect it cleanly and Shauna Akhtar will survive. Massive opportunity there. Shauna used her feet early on to get that boundary, tried it again, was beaten in the flight. This time, takes the single, gets herself off strike. Fahima Khatun back on strike again. Six runs from the first four deliveries. Bangladesh need big overs now. Healy had a slightly forgettable day with the gloves in the first T20I as well. Effected two very good dismissals at the start of today's innings with the gloves but falters this time around off the bowling of Georgia Wareham. That's the end of the 12th. Bangladesh are 58 for 4. And Wareham finishes her third, conceding just 10 for one wicket. Yeah, you look at the Australian spinners especially. They've all been going under six runs and over, and they've taken wickets as well. So it's interesting to see how well they've adjusted to the conditions here at Mirpur Sher Bangla, the national cricket stadium, the home of cricket in Bangladesh, usually known for its spinner friendly pitches, and Australian spinners are dominating. Sutherland to continue. 
Nicely bowled into the fourth stump line. Doesn't concede any runs. When you look at the young crop of Bangladeshi players coming up, the contribution of several members of Bangladesh's old guard have been massive. In oh. the case of Shorna Akhtar, for instance, it was former captain Rumana Ahmed who helped put Shorna into national reckoning after watching a video of Shorna's leg spin from the Roby spin hunt. The Roby spin hunt, of course, is a nationwide spin bowling competition held to find up and coming spin bowlers. Played nicely. It was aerial, but landed safely. Another run added to the total. And speaking of Sharna, another bright young prospect for Bangladesh with the ball for sure. She can also bat a bit. And as you mentioned, Rumana, she found her. It just goes to show how closely knit this unit is. Driven on the up. Finds the gap. There is a chase going on there. And eventually the fielder wins. A few more runs added to the total. And speaking about this being a closely knit unit, it's very important to have that in a country where these girls face so many obstacles. Social and uh, from m many areas not perhaps given the right amount of opportunities. There are so many barriers and they still make it. They're representing the country. They're trying to make their country proud. Played with soft hands, but straight to the fielder. Absolutely right, Shahnoor. Speaking of the barriers, they range from societal to religious to economic. And the fact that the majority of these players you see from the Bangladeshi side playing in this series and on the store at large have national contracts, which means there is a degree of financial security they happen to enjoy currently. 25 cricketers hold national contracts. That's the end of the 13th over. Bangladesh are 61 for 4. And in the subcontinent, with the women's game continuing to grow and go from strength to strength, it's imperative to have that semblance of financial security from host boards for female cricketers beyond the subcontinent as well. We saw how 2023 proved a groundbreaking year for women's cricket. South Africa professionalized their domestic structure. A parity in match fee being drawn by several boards. The first in doing so was, of course, the New Zealand Cricket Board. India followed suit and then came England, South Africa, Australia's domestic players also gay, get better pay now. Beautifully played down the track and over the top. It goes and goes all the way. It goes the distance. R ruining the numbers of Georgia Wareham is Shauna Akhtar, the teenager. Showing oodles of pluck. Not in two minds is very clear in her head as to the kind of stroke play she wants to play against a particular type of bowler. Takes on the leg spinner this time around and is duly rewarded with a four. During the under-19 Women's T20 World Cup last year in South Africa, the inaugural edition, she had a chance to meet the highest run-getter in women's international cricket, women's ODIs, Mithali Raj, the former India captain, had a chat with her and was praised by the India legend for both her batting and bowling. Well, the umpire is having a look. A third umpire, Shatira Zakir Jesse, trying to make sure whether it's a four or a six. You said it's a four. From certain angles, it looks like it's a, it's a it's a tough tough decision for the uh, 
third umpire to give. Rinda Rati immediately she uh, signaled on her walkie-talkie to the third umpire whether it's a six or a four. The bowler, she thought it's a six. Could be a matter of just a frame again as was the case with the stumping earlier in the innings. And the umpire, third umpire might be tempted to go with that soft signal from the bowler, Georgia Wareham, right? She's shaking her head, hoping uh, She's that the game moves on. She's signaling once again, it's a six. She's happy to take that additional two runs to her name to ensure that the game goes on. And it will, has been adjudged a six. This time played with soft hands after the six. Now that's a single good rotation of the strike there. Sharna and Fahima, they need to build a partnership and they need to score runs quickly. The required rate has shot up to, I'd say, impossible heights. The required rate of four, over 14 now. Again, use of the feet. Beats the fielder at mid-on and will find the fence once more. After a six, it's a four. This time from the bat of Fahima Khatun. Fahima and Shorna upping the ante. And the scoring rate. Some courageous stroke play from both batters. Alisa Haley jogs down to the other end to have a chat with Bairham. Will also try and get the fielder from deep square leg inside the circle. Fielder from deep point comes back into the circle. Oh, now that could have been an opportunity. Lucky for the batter, Fahima. That was an edge. There might have been two, but Shorna and Fahima, some miscommunication there between them. Fahima took the single and then didn't want to rotate strike. Sharna was looking for the second one. She's back on strike though. There perhaps was two runs there. 13 off Wareham's first five balls. Again, use of the feet coming down the track. There is a fielder there at deep mid wicket. Not more than a single. So finally a big over for Bangladesh. 14 runs coming off it. After 14, Bangladesh 75 for four. Annesha, you've been uh, telling us some amazing stories about these uh, cricketers, some of their backgrounds and how they're involved in multiple sports, especially for Australia, for Bangladesh, how they've overcome adversity. And it really goes to show what a big year it is for women's cricket with the T20 World Cup happening here in Bangladesh. It's a massive year for Bangladesh and women's cricket as well. And it's all about growing the game. More and more people are getting interested into women's cricket. They're starting to know about the players. We see so many fans of Elise Perry, for instance, in Bangladesh. Everybody wants her autograph or a selfie with her. There are fans of Elise Perry all over, all the, over world. the world. <laughs> Yeah, one of the titans of the sport across men's and women's cricket. One of the best all-rounders the game has ever seen. Oh, now, is that the wicket? The third umpire will be required once again, Rindarati. She signals that third umpire's assistance will be required. Given how Australia's captain, Elisa Healy, ran towards her bowler, she's pretty confident they've got the wicket of Sharn Akhtar. Shauna didn't look too perturbed on her part though. Difficult to tell from this angle. Seems like a part of her foot is behind. I tell you, I don't want to be the third umpire Shati Razakir Jesse in this match. <laughs> don't envy her job one bit. Long levers has Shauna Akhtar got. Did she manage to drag her back foot in time? 
part of the foot probably is behind the line. It belongs to the third umpire. This is a very tight call. This is a much better angle. What do you think, Gandesha? I have a feeling this might go in favor of the batter. And I think it has. Because they're walking back to their crease. Oh, a good delivery. Probably got the outside edge. It won't race all the way towards the boundary. Oh, the fielding was touch and go, but three more runs added to the total. The running between the wickets, decent enough on this occasion. Ash Gardner into her third over. The first one going for no runs. The close shout. Fahima and Sharna rotating strike. Fahima back on strike now on 15 from 17. Yeah, there were three runs there for the taking and good on the Bangladeshi pair to ensure that they got those three runs. A bit of a paddle attempted. Did she manage to get herself ball there? Fahima Khatun, what have you done? The Australians are celebrating. Fahima Khatun is making the long bat. Walk back to the pavilion. Bangladesh have lost their fifth wicket. Just when they were looking to build a partnership, another wicket falls. And again, we see her playing a high risk shot, trying to access that leg side, seeing her stumps broken. The paddle backfires top of middle and leg stump the ball kisses and Ashley Gardner picks up another wicket things go from back to us for Bangladesh the 160 two run target looks like a tall order now They've had their moments, Bangladesh, especially in the first innings when they were bowling. The bowling of Trishna. She got her second hat-trick in international T20s. Only becoming the third bowler to take two hat-tricks in T20 internationals. Again, it's looped up, but into the gap. There will be one more run added to the total. Ash Gardner, she comes in and in this over. She's been troubling the batters. The first one was a, the first delivery was a close call. She's got two wickets already in her third over. Shorna Akhtar nudges this one down into the leg side for a single. She is the set batter and should look to try and getting Bangladesh past that three digit score, which they have managed to do only once across the four matches they have played against Australia. Happened in the last tour. match. Yes, absolutely. Oh, now. Again, safe on that occasion. Shori Fakhatun. Gets two more runs. Again, some hesitance between the two batters when running between the wickets. But they're safe in the end. 15 overs done. Bangladesh, 82 for 5. There we see the run scored, top score by Dilara Akhtar. She started off well, got bogged down, eventually scoring 27 from 25. And now Sharn Akhtar not out on 20 from 15. The only two innings to really talk about. And there should be a change in bowling with Sophie Molyneux joining. And uh, Roselle will be joining me in the com box, replacing Onnesha. Welcome back, Roselle. Thank you very much, Shanur. Bangladesh started well, but couldn't keep the momentum. This time went to his left and uh, 
just a little punch into the onside, picks up the single. That's what I'm talking about. They couldn't keep the momentum into their own. Just a batting collapsed after losing the first wicket. And the amount of dot balls that really pile pressure on. Again, you see when the lines and lengths are good, it's difficult for the batters to get it away. Shorifa Khatun on this occasion, she's the new batter in. Sophie Molyneux, she's been extremely, extremely miserly, meticulous with her line and length. Again, a flight at delivery and clean bold. Sophie Molyneux has her second wicket. That's the end of Shorifa Khatun. A rather rudimentary shot there trying to play across the line of a lofted delivery and it's an option that I've oft said isn't the safest one playing across the line and she pays the price for it gone for three after four deliveries Bangladesh's batting woes compound as they lose their sixth wicket for 83 it's really very frustrating when you had a very good start but you couldn't carry that momentum from there losing wickets unnecessarily well I think uh, it's uh, I wouldn't say it's unnecessarily because there is the pressure of getting quick runs they need to score quickly Australia have piled on a massive total of 161 and for Bangladesh it was always going to be a daunting task and they started off well the power playovers went perhaps according to plan but then they lost their way and I keep talking about the number of dot deliveries that they had early on in the innings had they managed to score runs in some of those balls the pressure would have been lesser on the batters coming in Rabia Khan the youngster the leg spinner she's in and facing the music of Sophie Molyneux. Sophie Molyneux. Outstanding so far this time down the leg side and uh, swept it straight to the filler there. There is a filler inside the circle. Short fine leg. Molino outstanding so far in this over. Just uh, went for one run in the first delivery. Then dot, wicket, dot, dot. Again looking for a sweep shot. Impact outside. It's been a brilliant over nonetheless. After the first run in the first delivery. No more run score in this over. A wicket and five dot balls. Bangladesh 83 for 6 after 16. Needless to say. 79 from 24 deliveries is a foregone conclusion. What the Tigresses can focus on is finishing the game off well and putting up a better display with the bat than they did in the first T20 International. I spoke to Nigar Sultana Jyoti post-match and she said she wasn't as happy as she would have been had they scored a few more runs. Oh, and speaking of runs, there's another wicket, Sharna Akhtar. She comes down the track and Ash Gardner does the trick with the ball flighting it, deceiving the batter with the flight, taking her stumps off, getting the wicket. Sharna gone for 21, bowled by Gardner. Bangladesh getting stuck in a rut in the 80s, losing their seventh wicket, 83 for seven now. And on Nisha, she was speaking about Bangladesh probably aiming towards the three-figure mark. That's looking tough now. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at the replay once again. Just stumps are exposed and coming down the wicket to play into V. But he wasn't anywhere on the line of the delivery. That's why she has to pay the price. Nahida, the new batter, comes in. Ashley Gardner, third wicket for her. Three for 15 so far in 3.1 overs. 83 for seven. 
Again, played on the leg side. It will just be a single. As far as players of the match go, despite Trishna taking four for 19 of her four overs, you have to say the players of the match will go to one of the members of the winning team. Could it be Ash Gardner? She's got three wickets already. Another contender will be Georgia Wareham. She's got the top score in this match, 57. Well, the third umpire having a look at this. She's safe. An easier decision for Jesse. But you have to say that not the ideal way to ground your bat. We've seen Bangladesh's captain making this error in the first ODI. Thankfully, this didn't result in a wicket. As Gardner continues. Again, the sweep not reaping any rewards for the batters. And it's a shot that they keep going to and failing most times. Too many tempted sweep shots. We have seen from Bangladeshi batters, they are trying to hit boundaries those areas square leg behind square in every delivery almost Ravi Akhan this time of the back foot just uh, pushes the ball into the offside Bangladesh that's what uh, you were talking about aiming to just to reach 100 runs mark yeah, they're not going to go anywhere like that, but this time the sweep does bring about one run. So you play such a high-risk shot for just a single. Is it really worth it? Two runs off the over and a wicket. Ash Gardner, she finishes off her spell of four with just the 17 runs conceded. Bangladesh, after 17, 85 for seven. You look at the bowling figures, Gardner... Her bowling figure stand out. Sophie Molyneux, three overs, two wickets for six runs. That's another outstanding bowling effort. Megan Shoot, she was a bit expensive, though managed a wicket. Molyneux to continue. Rabia Khan this time uses her feet. Playing it with a straight bat is the way to go in Mirpur. And you would have thought, given how familiar Bangladesh are with these conditions, they'd make the most of it. They'd utilize it even better. And Bangladesh's captain, Nigar Sultana Jyoti, was very, very straightforward in assessing their performance and said Bangladesh didn't even play 10% of what they're capable of in the ODIs, especially with the bat. And she also, she also mentioned that none of these places are safe for any of these players that aren't performing. No run on this occasion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way to go. You have to be very, very ruthless and cutthroat. Build a culture where winning is the only mantra. Oh, that's a big appeal. And the finger goes up. Nahid Akhtar. She'll have to depart. Sophie Molyneux has three. Look at those bowling figures. Three, four, seven. Bangladesh, as I said, in a rut in the 80s. 86 for eight now. Yeah, might be bottled out under 100. Because 86 runs, eight wickets down. So, tail enders are exposed already. Nahida goes for... One run. Let's have a look at the replay. Just pitches the ball outside off, and that's arm delivery. And uh, probably it will hit the middle stump. Excellent bowling from Sophie Molinu. Just conceded seven runs. Three balls to finish his four over scota exhibited 
excellent bowling performance today. Marfa, the new veteran, known for her bowling. She did come on to bat in the first T20 International as well. It displayed a few good shots with the bat for a change, but really, Bangladesh fell apart after a good start with the bat. Only new looking for more, but this time it just evades the fielder. One bounce to her. Marufa and Rabia, known for their bowling, really having to try and see the final few deliveries in this innings if they can that was very close that was very close to getting the off stump and knocking it back rabia survives two runs in this over only and a wicket as well sophie molyneux another contender for the player of the match award That's in the air, just evading the fielder at short fine leg. Two more runs added. So after 18, Bangladesh still in the 80s, 89 for 8. You look at some of the bowling performances by the Australians Megan shoot she started off expensive 22 for one in her two overs Elise Perry bowled two 10 runs gave away a few wides in her first over Ash Gardner four overs 17 for three Sophie Molyneux four overs three for ten pick of the bowlers Georgia Wareham also with one wicket 24 for one and uh, Annabelle Sutherland bowled two overs, gave away just six runs. And speaking of Annabelle Sutherland, she's back into the attack. Sutherland, tall, lanky girl from Australia. Right arm, medium fast bowler. Almost into the yoke length. Not just the ball into the onside. Looking for two, but denied by Rabia Khan. Single to start of the 19th over, the penultimate over. It's been another tough day at the office for Bangladesh. They had their moments in the first innings, especially with the bowling of Trishna. This time it's cut away, but straight to the fielder. Again, in the second innings, they started off well with the bat as well. Dilara Akhtar. She played a few shots, then got bogged down. The first wicket fell for 34. And then, all of a sudden, you're looking at Bangladesh losing wickets in quick succession. As another run is added to the total. You saw three wickets falling in the 40s and three wickets falling in the 80s, losing three wickets in clusters twice in the run chase. As the spinners for Australia put the pressure on. Sutherland to Marufa, they step high up in the air. There is a chance of catch, fielder underneath it. No, fallen short. No man's land. This time, no damage done to Bangladesh. Yeah, but damage has already been done <laughs> by the other bowlers. Ash Gardner and uh, Sophie Molyneux, they've taken six wickets between them, giving away just 27 runs in their six overs. This is lofted into the gap. By 6 two fielders, but doesn't have the legs to go all the way. Will be a few more runs nonetheless. A good looking shot by Rabia Khan. Bangladesh have certainly enjoyed the pacers a bit more than they have the spinners. And it's been 
an unusual tale because it's Bangladesh's pacers that have done a job done, that have bowled better. Speaking of bowling better, that was much better by Annabel Sutherland to finish off her over. 19 overs done Bangladesh, 94 for 8. As I said, it's going to be a big year of international cricket for the women's team and for Bangladesh as well with the women's T20 World Cup happening in about five months. India are expected to tour as well. And that's consecutive tours for India in consecutive years to Bangladesh. Bangladesh performed brilliantly against India in the ODI series last year, drawing it. Megan Shoot to finish things off, the final over, and it's driven down the ground for a single. Rosel, Bangladesh, obviously not too many positives from this series, but you have to say the way women's cricket is growing worldwide and the amount of effort the board and the selectors and the whole country is trying to put behind women's cricket is a massive positive. Undoubtedly, Shanur. It's time, a little bit of slower delivery. Swept it, again falling short. Excellent. That's a valiant effort from the fielder there. Meanwhile, couple of runs taken by the two batters. You're talking about that. Lots of development should be already happened or occurred by the boards and who are working behind on it. But Bangladesh couldn't deliver with the expectation driven firmly into the onside and picks up a single there. Yeah, speaking of expectations, perhaps it's the pressure of expectation in this tour, uh, the Australia tour of Bangladesh, that have let the hosts down a bit. Again, I go back to what Captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti has said and she has spoken about this pressure. Oh, and that's another wicket. Marufa came down the track, ended up getting stumped by the Australian captain, Elisa Healy, who made no mistake on that occasion. So Bangladesh losing their ninth wicket, 98 for nine, still two runs short of that three-figure mark that they might be thinking of. Marufa gone for four from five deliveries. And as I was saying, that it's perhaps the pressure of expectation, but at the same time, take nothing away from what the Tigresses have done leading up into the series, winning their first ever one day international in South Africa, the first ever T20 international against South Africa as well in South Africa. And before that, clean sweeping Pakistan in the ODIs and T20 international series at home. And you have to say that all of those goes into the record books as the first ever that Bangladesh have done. And then drawing the series against India before that, the first ever series that they drew against India, the first ever one day international win, tie, everything. It, 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 it's been a fantastic few months for Bangladesh. Yeah, this time again high up in the air, but there is no filler. Straightish just uh, crosses the 30 yard circle, straightish mid on, you can say. But you are talking about, yes, a fantastic a uh, couple of months, Bangladesh just to spend. But now, looks like this team is morally down. Lack of confidence I'm seeing in this team. Oh, um, and it's the final delivery of the innings. And it goes all the way for a boundary. It will be buys, I believe. Uh, in fact, uh, Rindarati is signaling it's a four. So, Bangladesh reaching the 100 in the final ball of the innings. Nonetheless, it's a heavy defeat for the hosts. They managed 103 and losing this match. Australia winning it by 59 runs. 
a big margin in T20 cricket has to be said plenty of performances by the Australians with the bat it was the joint contributions of Grace Harris who scored 47 from 34 deliveries Georgia Wareham 57 from 30 and you look at the teams both shaking hands as they leave the field who's your player of the match Rosel? it's really uh, I think upsetting moment for Trishna Fariha Trishna and uh, she got the hat trick today but uh, I may might be her hat trick goes in vain because Georgia Wareham she played really very well scored 57 runs and picked up two wickets on the other hand Sophie Molino three wickets for her Ashley Gardner as well, three wickets. So, Georgia Wareham, beg your pardon, picked up one wicket. Megan shoot two wickets. So, I think Georgia Wareham, in my opinion, so she will be the man of the match. What do you think? Yeah, Wareham scored runs with the bat, 57 from 30, and also took wickets. So, and as you can see, the Bangladesh scorecard, not much to write home about. Dilara Akhtar, she started off well, played a few shots. Apart from her, no one else really got going. Yes, there was the 21-odd runs by Sharn Akhtar in the middle. 17 deliveries she faced. A bright prospect for Bangladesh nonetheless. And then Rabia remaining not out in the end with 14 runs from 17 deliveries. It's been a hot day here in Dhaka. It's been tough for the players, even though it's a T20 format. You look at the bowling. Let's have a look at the bowling card. Megan Shute, two wickets in three overs, 31 runs conceded. Alice Perry, no wicket for her. Ashley Gardner and Sophie Molyneux both get three wickets. One wicket for Georgia Wareham. Finally, they managed to pick up nine wickets of Bangladesh women after 20 overs. Total 103 for nine Bangladesh women. The given extra three extra runs. Match summary: Australia women. They won the toss and elected to bat first. 161 for eight wickets after 20 overs. Faria Trishna's hat trick was there. Four wickets for 19 runs in four overs. And Grace Harris 47 runs of 34 deliveries as well. Two wickets for Nahid Akhtar in reply. Uh, Bangladesh women 103 for 9. Dilara Akhtar 27 with the leading run scorer from Bangladesh side. Three wickets for Ash Gardner and Sophie Molinu. Megan shoot 2 for 31. Georgia Wareham 1 for 24 in four overs. Australia women, women 1 by 58 runs. A big margin of victory for the Aussies. They take the T20 International Series as well after clean sweeping. Bangladesh in the ODIs. They're now 2 0 ahead with one match left on Thursday. While we contemplate who the player of the match is, whether it's Georgia Wareham, whether it's Grace, whether it's Ash Gardner, whether it's Sophie Molyneux, plenty of performances. Yes, and uh, economical. Sophie Molino just given away 10 runs, picked up three wickets, also three important wickets of Bangladesh. So she will be one of the contenders alongside Georgia Wareham and Ash Gardner as well. And let's not forget about Trishna's performance, uh, the biggest positive for Bangladesh in today's match, bringing her back into the team. She was a regular fixture before Marufa Akhtar came onto the scene with her fast bowling and really rose up the ranks. But now, Faria Islam Trishna, she's got everyone's attention back again with today's performance. And that holds her in good stead in the future and the upcoming days as a busy calendar year awaits Bangladesh. In a few moments, Onnesha Ghosh will 
start the post-match presentation with the player of the match and speak with the two captains. But from us here in the commentary box, I've been Shahnu Rabbani, joined alongside Rosa. And this is goodbye from us for the time being. After a comprehensive 3-0 series sweep in the ODI leg, Australia, under the captaincy of Alisa Haley, have managed to wrap up the T20i series with a 2-0 victory with one 
game still to spare. And this time around, they notched up a victory by 58 runs against Bangladesh, who on their part scripted a memorable comeback with the ball, spearheaded by their young left-arm pacer, Fari Hatrishna, who took her second T20i hat-trick. But eventually, the 162-run target proved too much for the home team. Time to introduce the presentation party. To my left, Mr. Najib Ahmed, BCB Director and Vice Chairman of BCB Women's Wing. He's accompanied by Mr. Nizamuddin Chaudhary, Chief Executive Officer of the Bangladesh Cricket Board. May I now invite losing captain, Negar Sultana Jyoti, for a quick conversation. Nigar, commiserations on the defeat. What did you make of the target to start out with? See, uh, we wanted to see our ballers against their better because uh, how they played actually it was incredible. And obviously, uh, uh, for the first uh, 10 over, they batted really well. And uh, after 10 over, we come back very strongly. It seems like sometime that they'll go for the 200, but uh, I think uh, the way the bowlers come back, it, it was great. And if I talk about the batting, I think we had a very good start today that we are missing out for uh, in the ODS and the first T20. So I'm uh, ha so happy for that. But uh, and then the next, I think uh, we are lack of partnership and uh, somehow we uh, lost wicket early. That comeback with the ball was quite impressive, helmed by your young left arm pacer, Fari Hatrishna, taking her second T20I hat trick. You decided to keep her for that 20th over. How impressed are you with her performance? Four wickets to her name today. See, she, uh, she's very young and uh, she uh, came back after a long time, and how she bowled in the power play, it was brilliant. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I given her in the last over, and I thought uh, how even she was bowled really well uh, initially. So. I kept her in the last, so see how she bowled in the death over. So she re bowled really well, and uh, I think uh, she kind of deserved it because she's been working so hard, and uh, how she come back, it's really inspiring. With the bat, too, you seem to have taken that momentum at the start of your innings. Dilara Akhtar started out resoundingly well. What do you make of your right-hand opener, Akhtar? Yes, yes. See, Dola is a very young, talented player coming from the under-19 side and uh, I think uh, thanks to BCB that uh, continuously we are giving her the opportunity to settle down there and uh, how she approached today, it was uh, really impressive and uh, I'm looking forward to see her uh, in the next game, how she uh, batted in there. You've lost the series, sure, but there's still a third T20i to be played and against a side like Australia, an opportunity like this is definitely gold. What do you look to get out of that last game of this tour? See, they are, this is a very, uh, uh, I'm, I think, a very experienced tour for us because uh, play against them, and it was a very uh, good learning side for us because they are a very strong side. And I think how our uh, players are showing their character sometimes and how they bowl against them and sometimes how they play against them, it's a very uh, good learning side. And uh, hopefully we can play better in the next game. Thank you, Nigar. Go well in the 30 20 i Time now to announce the player of the match. No surprises there, because it has to be a certain Georgia Wareham for her 30-ball 57, having been promoted at number three. And later on, she went on to take one for figures of one for 24. May I invite Georgia Wareham, the Australia leg spin bowling all-rounder, to collect her award from BCB Director, Mr. Najib Ahmed, please. Georgia, many congratulations. You seem to be bolstering that description, that qualifier of being a leg spin bowling all-rounder, aren't you? Uh, I'm trying to. I'm um, just making the most of every opportunity that I get given um, with the bat, which is really fun. And to be able to bat up the order today was, was really cool. And um, yeah, just trying to make the most of it. When were you told that there is a possibility of you being promoted to number three? Um, sort of at the start of the series, I think um, there's always going to be a little opportunity to, to change some things up and, and just play with some freedom um, in the power play, which was really fun. And yeah, hopefully another you know, opportunity to do that soon. You seem to be having a good few weeks here in the subcontinent. Had a great time with RCB. 
Did you happen to have taken some confidence with the bat going by how you went about your business as a batter with RCB as well? Um, yeah, I think I got a few opportunities um, throughout the WPL with the bat, um, which definitely gave me some confidence coming in here, I guess. Batting a little bit higher throughout that tournament to, to come in here with some confidence is really good. And um, yeah, for the coaches to back me and push me up the order a little bit is really special. And um, yeah, I'm glad I could, I guess, guess get the job done today. Finally, what is it about the Victorians? They seem to be coming back after long injury layoffs and taking wickets for fun. Yourself included, Sophie Molyneux and Taylor Blaming, who did not play today's game, but did pick up a wicket off a third ball. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a testament to those guys and how, they, how hard they work behind the scenes and um, I guess the support that they have back home to be able to come back and, and play straight away and I guess perform um, straight away out on the park, which is really special. And um, yeah, I know Sophie was unbelievable today. You know, she has been throughout the entire series. so. Um, yeah. You've had a long day at the office today and a rewarding one as well. Go back, put your feet up and enjoy the rest of the day. Congratulations once again. Thank you. All right there, Georgia Wareham with a well-deserved Player of the Match award. May I now invite the winning captain, Alisa Haley, for a brief chat. Alisa, after the series sweep, how pleased are you to have wrapped up the T20 I series as well, following that ODI leg triumph with a 2-0 victory. Um, yeah, obviously really pleasing. Probably more so about um, how we're playing our cricket. Probably more pleasing than the result itself. So um, it's great to see lots of different people get opportunities today and um, make most of it. Talk us through that new look, rejig batting order. Grace Harris opening with Phoebe Litchfield. Georgia Wareham's punt comes off uh, in a big way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, we're just looking at a few different options that um, could happen in the World Cup. I mean, you never really know what's going to happen injury-wise or um, form-wise as well. So just having a little look at um, some ways that we can rejig our order and probably make the, make the most of um, the depth that we've got. And um, I thought they did an outstanding job today. We'll probably... To be brutally honest, maybe 20 runs short, um, we, we lost our way in the middle, but um, full credit to the girls for the way they started. Now, one of your premier batters, a young one at that, Phoebe Litchfield, is going through a lean patch. She started off very well in international cricket, and we know that the ever-expanding workload in women's international cricket and with franchise leagues sprouting as well. How do you go about handling a Litchfield in this phase of time? Oh, I think it's just about... Um, giving her confidence and reminding her that she's good enough to be here and um, she's got just as good a skill set as anybody else out there on the field. Um, she's a, a very young player in her international career and um, she's got a lot to, to learn as well and um, this is probably one of those learning patches that you've got to go through at some point but um, we fully back her. I mean she's, she's really not far away. She's hitting the ball beautifully so um, she just needs a little bit of luck maybe. And a word on your performance from the spin attack, helmed by Georgia and Sophie Molyneux. Ashley Gardner also in, among the wickets. Yeah, I think the variability of the wicket um, really helped them. I mean, some gripped and turned and then some slid straight on. So, um, yeah, look, they've been outstanding for us um, the whole five games that we've played so far. Um, and no doubt our spinners are, are going to play a key role in the World Cup come the back of the year. So um, they're, they're showing some really good signs at the moment. Final one, do we see more experimentation in the third T20i from Alisa Healy? Uh, I'm not sure. You'll have to ask our selector over there and um, see what sort of lineup they'll give us. But um, I thoroughly enjoyed batting at 10 today. Enjoy further, maybe, in the third T20i. We'll have to wait and watch as to what the look of the Australian batting lineup and their starting 11 looks like come Thursday when the third and final T20i and match of this historic tour of Australia's, their first in a bilateral arrangement in this country, will be played. Thank you for joining us. See you again on Thursday. It is time for the toss. Bangladesh captain Jyoti will spin and it's a tail. So the news from the toss is Australia have won and they have chosen to bat first. Of what is a six match assignment, the breeze that we saw and felt you would have expected because has been paired up. How well they can play here in this service. First ball. T20 World Cup side. 
pitched on a six stump line. Grace Harris at another boundary. Dances down the track and tries to go over the infield, but will be caught by Rabea Khan. Praised. That's a very good field setup from. Again, use of the feet just over the fielder at mid on. Swept away beautifully, and it's going to go all the way for a max. Also investing in leg spinners. Again, pulled away. Played, but straight to the fielder. 48th wicket, two away from 50. It initially hit her. 43, that's immense for T20 internationals. Comes down the wicket. Now there is a fielder there. Can she catch it? Yes, she can. And they rebuild here. Again, use of the feet coming down the track. Making room, but that looks close. And the finger from the umpire goes up. Final over. Driven nicely, finds the gap. Will it go all the way? Yes, it does. Through the covers, Ellis Perry. Again, it's a lofted shot, and it goes straight to the hands of the fielder at extra cover. Standing up for the medium pacer, Trishna. It's wide, it's cut away, but straight to the fielder. Trishna on a hat trick. Ooh, the appeal is there. It's going down leg, perhaps. No! Shh! For Bangladesh. And a hat trick for Trishna. Beautifully driven. And that will go all the way for four runs. Is the shorter area of the ground. Over the top. Gets bat on ball. Great connection. Of Might have ended up hitting the stumps. Very nicely dealt with for the second. The left-right combination perhaps uh, being a bit of a bother. Again driven and goes past the fielder. It was a bit uppish but will go boundary. Or she does on strike. Again tries to break free. Beautifully played. Throw from the bat. And again looking for that big shot and it results in a wicket. Yes, the um. Elise Perry to continue with the ball of the Pacers. Third ball, this time around, she will have to depart off the bowling of Ashley Gardner. This time again comes down the wicket straight to the fielder. She finds three wickets down. This time that's a short piece delivery. Bangladesh in all sorts of bother at this moment. The outside edge. Came down the pitch, did Shorna Akhtar and will get a boundary. Under 19 Women's World Cup for certain. Alisa Haley couldn't collect it cleanly. This unit is. Get better pay now. Beautifully played. Down the track and over the top. Could be a matter of just a frame again as was the case with the. Six. She's happy to take that additional two runs. Or those three runs. A bit of a paddle. Gonna fly to delivery and clean bold. Yeah, they're not going to go anywhere like that, but this time the sweep does is the only mantra. Nahid Akhtar. There's six overs. This is lofted into the gap by six two fielders. But said, and she has spoken about this pressure. Oh, and that's another wicket. Seeing in this team. Oh, and it's the final delivery of the innings and it goes all the way for a boundary. It will be buys, I believe. The teams. And uh, she got the hat. She played really, very well.